What is going on, clan? Welcome to an all-in-one guide for God of War Ragnarok. In this guide, I'm going to show you how to get all the stuff required for the Platinum, so that way we can make it easy and still have a lot of fun doing it. Now, you can follow this guide from the start and not really be spoiled on anything. Um, I made sure to, you know, try to avoid spoilers and cut out certain things that weren't really necessary and would just be there to spoil things. So you can follow it by just pausing the video after you see what point I'm at and then just wait until you get to that point. And there's a lot of segments where we're just playing the story and kind of just enjoying it. So if you kind of just want to play through and get all of the collectibles at once so there's minimal backtracking, then this is probably the guide for you. Now, if you're coming back and you beat the story and you just want to do the collectibles, you can still use it and you can use the timestamps below as well. There will be timestamps for this, so that way it'll make it a little bit easier for you guys since it is an all-in-one and it's a pretty big video. Now, I have done my best to condense this as much as possible. There's some things that are obviously cut out, like following story quests and things like that, because I'm pretty sure you're able to follow a quest marker. So things that aren't necessary will be cut out, so don't worry about that. I've condensed this and spent a lot of time on it to make sure it's as efficient as possible. So, yeah, I hope you guys can follow it really easily. I hope you guys have a great time with me. It's a fun game. I think we're going to have a good time. But again, if you want to help me out, you want to help out the algorithm, leave a like on the video. And I mean, honestly, guys, if you're new around here, And with all of that stuff out of the way, guys, let's have some fun and let's get the platinum together. Let's do this shit. All right, guys. So right from the menu, some things I'd recommend doing is going to accessibility. And if you're struggling on some of the bosses or anything like that, you can turn on evade assist and mini boss checkpoints. Evade assist just gives you more iframes, which is invincibility frames. So that way you can dodge easier. And then also the repeated button presses, you can switch to hold. So that way you don't have to sit there and tap circle. Other than that, those checkpoints will come in handy on bosses if you're struggling, and there's no difficulty-related trophies, so pick whatever. Alright, so our starting area as we play through the game will be in Svartalheim, and you're going to see a raven right at the start here on this rock. Go ahead and chuck your axe at it, and then hop in the boat. Now, I'm not going to show a lot of the things that aren't really necessary. It's all pretty linear, so we're going to come down this path here. And, and this is after reaching the next dock. All you have to do is freeze the geyser with the axe, jump over, freeze the next geyser, and then we can grab our first artifact of 43. These are in sets, so don't let that confuse you. Basically, there's 43 in total, but some of the sets are just six and so forth. All right, immediately after, we can get our first Nornir chest. So what you do is you destroy the runes here, the rune seals. There's the one directly behind us, the one down below on our right, and then one across the water here. Once you grab all three of those seals, the chest will then unlock, and we can go ahead and open it for our first item. Now, you're either going to get the apple or the horns, and each of them will either raise your health or your rage. Eventually, you're going to keep going down. I'm going to show these throughout the story, just so that way you can upgrade your character. They're basically permanent upgrades, so they're not needed for the platinum, but you can grab them as you see them. And I'll make sure I point them out as we go across them. We won't really go out of our way for them. We're just going to really get them on the way to other things. Now our next Nornir chest, you don't have to actually get this one if you don't want to. We're going to find some more throughout the game. But if you do decide to go this way, it's just on the left side shortly after grabbing that dew. You can then clear this island of enemies. And then that way you can start doing the little puzzle for the chest. Um, it's pretty easy anyway, so I recommend just grabbing it. You want to hit that first one twice to the right. The second one you want to hit twice to the right. And then there's a third one. And you're going to go back towards where the chest was. You're going to find a grapple that you can jump up to. And then up here above and then to the right is going to be the final one. You just want to hit it once to the right. And then you can open the chest. You only need 30 chests for the platinum. So anything else is just extra. And they put more of them throughout the game. But if you're following along with the guide, you'll get all of them anyways. Now, as you progress, you're eventually going to come to this next sort of puzzle here with that chain that you can pull down. And there's actually an artifact up here. So once you're up here, all you have to do is freeze this geyser. That's going to make the platform go up with the water pushing it. And then all you do is grab the artifact here on this bench. So there's another artifact for us. After that, we're going to keep going until you get to the village of dwarves. 
So again, we're skipping all this. So just enjoy the story up until you get to this part here with Sindri's shop. And then you can get the raven here on the left side of the shop on the house. After you grab the raven, we can make our way back towards the dock from where we came initially. And with our newly grabbed arrows, we can destroy this blockade, go through and find the other artifact. All right, so we're smashing them out already. After you grab this one, make your way back towards Sindri's shop. We're just gonna use it as a reference point. Then all you wanna do is come up here and go through this crawl space. And then after you make your way outside to the other part of it, there's gonna be this area over here to the left. Make your way through this kind of tunnel. And then once you get halfway through, you're gonna find a grapple point, but you're also gonna find our next artifact. Now, after you grab this, I just wanna let you guys know that throughout the game, there will be some favors, which are side quests throughout the game that we won't have to do for the platinum. I won't be doing those in this video, but if you'd like to do them, they don't affect getting the platinum. So you definitely can do them if you'd like to. But after this part here, you can see he's gonna give you a side quest. We're not gonna do that. We're just gonna continue on with the main story. Eventually that'll lead us here. And then after this little scene with you and Atreus, you're gonna also be able to grab a do for the permanent upgrade. Again, not required for platinum, but they'll be nice and make things a bit easier for you when you're going up against the berserkers, which are required for the platinum. All right, after that, you'll eventually get to this train cart area called the forge. And as you come to this kind of balcony spot, you'll see a raven flying around here. It can be a bit tricky, but I found out if you come to the left here, you can get a pretty good shot on it. Go ahead and grab that one. That's going to be our third one. And then we can grab an artifact nearby. Climb up on this rock, jump down and smash this thing here. And then under that will be our next artifact. Shortly after this part, keep progressing. You're going to come to our first little mini boss kind of thing. And just remember, whenever you kill them to try to loot them, it's not a big deal if you don't, because whenever you're at a shop, you'll find a chest there and that chest gives you those lost items. So anything you don't loot will end up there. But just try to remember that just saves you an extra step. Other than that, we can make our way through the story until we get to this part after the train. You're going to go down the chain here and then grab our next artifact. Now we can feed two birds with one scone here because there's actually two things. There's the artifact and then there's a raven. Wait till the raven comes around. You can just have your axe ready. The raven gets sort of close and then let go. Might take you a couple tries, but just wait for it. Make sure you grab both of those before progressing. As you make your way over here, you're going to grapple across. You're going to find our first chest that requires us to use the Blades of Chaos. Now, you don't actually have to hold R2. You can see I'm holding R2 to light these. You don't have to do that. So as you can see, we don't want to light this one yet. Because when we go across, it's going to make the water put it out anyways. But you only have to tap R2. You don't have to hold it like I'm doing in these clips. I kind of figured that out later. I'm a little bit slow. But as we jump back, then you want to freeze this one. And then we can light it. Because if you light it beforehand, it's just going to get put out anyways. So jump back over, freeze the water, and then light it. And then you should have all three lit. And then that's going to be our third chest. Now, the items in the chest can vary depending on if you are grabbing everyone that I'm grabbing. But as long as you get 30 of them, it doesn't matter. All right, eventually you're gonna to come to this area here with a little bit of a puzzle. All you have to do is drag the water over. It's gonna cause the crane to bring this giant kind of block over here that we're gonna jump on. So with the water going down, it's gonna bring this block over here. Once the block comes up to the spot where you can grapple it, jump on top. And we wanna make it move again. So in order to do that, you just wanna freeze the water with your ax. Doing that's gonna make the crane go back to where it initially was. Once it stops, you'll be able to jump down and then grapple over to the ledge. And this is where one of the artifacts is hidden. So make your way to the very back of the area here, and then you can grab the artifact. You can also loot the chest that you find. That's perfectly fine. I only show what's really required for the platinum, but sometimes there's some upgrades. And if they're really decent, I'll point them out as well. We're then going to find our first upgrade. And this one is actually story related. If I'm not mistaken, you're going to find the dwarf crush between the rocks here. Go ahead and loot him, and that's going to be our first of 14, so there's a fair few to grab throughout the game. And these are just also um, attacks that you can use, or buffs as well, so if you press L1 and circle, you'll use it. Keep progressing through the mines, and you'll find this shimmy wall here, that's kind of next to the door. But more importantly, to the left of the shimmy wall is a raven. And then that's all we have until you make your way through the story and end up in Alfheim. So enjoy the story until you get to Alfheim through this little shimmy area here. 
you're going to be with another companion and um, Atreus. As you go down, you're going to find the first Brazier here. Just go ahead and like that. Make your way past the chest and to the left. If you look down and to your right, you're going to find another one. And then after that one, the final one is up top. It says you're supposed to go up and do it, but if you just kind of go to the right, you should be able to grab it and reach it. And then that way you don't have to go all the way back up and around. Light that one, and then you can go ahead and open the chest. After that, keep going through this area of Alfheim, and eventually you're going to come to this path here. Again, the game's fairly linear, so you can't miss it. We're going to go over here. You're going to see a raven way in the distance. Just give that a nice chuck. And that should be your sixth raven. Keep going, and shortly after, you're going to learn about these little reflector things that you throw your axe off of. I don't know what you want to call them. But there's going to be a ledge just after that that you can drop down. Drop down this ledge, take out the enemies, and then you can loot the chest here for another runic ability for the axe. But more importantly, just to the right of the chest is going to be our eighth artifact. So you can equip that one if you'd like. There's some decent ones we'll get throughout the game. But go ahead and grab that and then grab the artifact. Please make sure you get the artifact and then progress through the level. Eventually you'll come to this area here where you have to lift this pillar. So it's a good reference point to make sure that you're not missing anything. We're going to head down the steps here. And as we go down to the right, there's going to be an artifact in front of a chest. Now, we can't get this chest yet because we don't have the item or ability to do so. So you don't have to worry about it. It's one of the ones that we're not getting for now. And then you can just keep continuing on. Now, eventually in Alfheim, you're going to be in this area here where you grapple your way up to the top. You're going to climb a staircase. Keep going up the staircase. So we're in the Temple of Light in Alfheim. And as you get to the very top, you're going to see a little bit of a light right here. And that means you can jump off of a ledge here. So make sure you don't pass it. It's just on the top of the staircase. You're going to see a raven behind there. And the only way to get him is if you throw your axe at a good angle. It's then going to bounce over, bounce off that, and then hit the raven. So that's going to be your seventh raven. There's also a chest down there if you want to drop down one more level and grab that. But other than that, continue through the level until you get to the next little puzzle. And here you're going to find the artifact up top. So this is your 10th one already. And then you can do the puzzle and make your way through the barrier. Now you'll come to another barrier with a little bit of a puzzle. And you can see the wheel here. But instead of doing the wheel, what we want to do first is you'll see a door here. Go through the doorway. And then there's a slight puzzle here with the chain. We're going to bust out our axe, grab the chain, pull the chain down. You're going to see the little reflector thing. I don't know what to call those, bro. But bounce your axe off of it, and then you'll notice nothing really happened. You can let go of the chain. Stand right about here and press triangle, and as you call it back, it's going to break that and then drop the platform so then you can loot the chest. This is going to be our second relic. So this is going to be our second relic. Make sure you grab it. It's just going to be less backtracking in the future. And you can equip it as well if you prefer. After that, then you can do the puzzle. Proceed through the doorway. Once you go through the doorway, you're going to get jumped by the nightmares. Go ahead and quickly kill them. And then on the left here is going to be our 11th artifact. So before progressing, make sure you grab this one. So it's just there on the table. Then you can keep going until we find our next chest. So you're going to go up this light bridge, and you're going to see a chest here on the side of the staircase. And what you want to do to get this one, you're going to see there's three bells, and we have to hit them all, you know, within a decent amount of time. So this one's not freed. You want to come over and use a little shock arrow on it to free it up. And then if you go over here, we can hit C, R, and then N. Now, it does seem like whenever you hit the N... If you actually hit the end first, it seems to last longer. So in future, if you find yourself struggling with those for whatever reason, just hit the end first and it does help a little bit. It just seems like it gives you a bit more time. But after you grab that chest, you can then make your way up for our next raven. So it's only shortly after the chest. You'll come up to this area with more of those reflectors. 
and then another staircase and up here by this staircase is where you're going to see the raven just go ahead and charge up the axe take out the raven and that should be your eighth one after that keep going through the story now this next part i thought it was worth showing because these were kind of hard to find at one point like you have to get four of these sinkholes and for some reason i couldn't find the fourth one maybe it's because i'm blind or like i have dane bramage or something but all you have to do is from this point here you can see the legendary chest if you go from that chest to this back area here and then just follow the path until you see this side chest here and then there's a path to the right of it and that's where your fourth one is it took me a while to find it so if you're struggling there you go i got your back but anyways we're going to progress until you get to vanaheim which is this jungle type area you'll know you're in the right spot because you can see that pot that you can drop down but what you want to do is make your way to the left side and you'll go to this little pond type area on the left side. This is where you're going to find another raven. I found if you aim towards the left, he gets pretty close and then that way it's pretty hard to miss. So it should be our ninth one. Make sure you grab that and then you can go back on the story path. As you go through the story path, what you're going to do at this part is you're going to take out a few enemies in this area. After you take them all out, you can jump up these ledges at the very back. I love Brock. He's so fucking hot. So keep going around here and then you're going to jump over the ledge because there's going to be a shortcut grapple here on the left side. So there's a reference point there. You can see it. And then we can drop down into this to find our 12th artifact. And since you unlock that shortcut grapple, you can just grapple your way back up to the top and then go the story path. All right. Eventually you're going to come to this open area here gonna get attacked by a plant but behind you is some bramble go ahead and light the bramble and then bust out your axe and for this one here you're gonna want to hit it to the right twice so hit that one to the right twice then we're gonna go towards the chest and to the right there's gonna be some more bramble just go ahead and burn that with the blades bust out the axe again you want to hit it to the right and then hit it to the right so twice to the right again just like the first one. And then the last one is just to the left of the chest up high on the cliff. And you just want to hit it once on the right. So you got twice on the right, twice on the right, and then once on the right. Just to make that, you know, simple as can be. That's what we're all about here. All right, so loot the chest for another upgrade. And after that, we can make our way through the story. You're going to be leaving Freyr's camp. And you'll know you're in the right area because you'll see this kind of cracked wall on the right that we can't use yet. So just ignore that and go left. And on the left, you're going to see a pigeon up here on the tree. And that's going to be our 10th one. So we already got 10 of those little shits. After that, keep making your way down the story path until you get to the area here where you have to freeze the poison. Watch out for these little poison things. Burn the bramble to get a chain to fall down. As the chain falls down, climb it up. You're going to end up in this area here where you can drop off to the right. So instead of going to the top first, we're going to drop to the right by first freezing this poison so we don't die. And then you're just going to loot this legendary chest. Now this is our third shield. Um, the first two are actually bought from any kind of blacksmith, so just from the shop. So whenever you go there next, if you haven't purchased them for whatever reason, just go ahead and buy them. There'll be a bit of a reminder later on as well when we get our fifth one, so don't worry too much about it. You'll get to an area here with this crane. And there's a chest here, so you want to move the crane until the fire gets to this brazier here. Then you can jump across and then hit the crane around. Turn it on until the fire is in front of you. When it's in front, you can grab on it and then press to the left. That's going to light another one. So that's two of them lit, and we need obviously three. But before we leave, we're going to also burn this bramble. So grab it again, and then this time push it forward instead of to the left. That'll burn the bramble. Then we can head back by using our axe, of course. Bring the grapple over so you can make your way forward. We're going to grapple across, chuck that back over, and then swing across. Our last one, as you can see, is over there to the right. So all you need to do is go around the corner here, go down the slope, and then to the left here is going to be our last one. Like that, and then look directly behind you and you can find the chest. So that one's not too bad, just a little bit. We kind of had to work for that one, if I'm honest. So 
It's not too bad, but you got this. Go ahead and smash that out, grab the chest. Eventually you'll get attacked by this little mini boss for our third relic, so it's story related. And then you will fight another boss that gives us an amulet. And one of the trophies is to upgrade this amulet to full, which I'll be showing you how throughout the guide as well. So just make sure you have those. They're story related, so you can't miss them. And if you do, you can always get them from the chest at the shop. As you get to this mystic gateway with Freya, you're going to find our artifact here, number 13, before the gateway. Make sure you grab that, then go through the gateway. And then you're going to grab your fourth shield as part of the story. So then we only have one left, which we'll grab later on. And as long as you bought the other two from the blacksmith, again, otherwise I'll remind you when we get to the fifth one. Now eventually you come to this area here, Lake of Nine. I always have the area in the top left, of course, so if you ever get lost, you can look at that. Now we're in the Lake of Nine. Immediately after entering the Lake of Nine, if you go straight from where you enter, you're going to find this sort of area here, across from the temple as a reference point. You'll find some gauntlets here, the Gauntlets of Guiding Light, and there's a few armor pieces that we're going to grab throughout here that are just little upgrades to make the game a bit easier for you. And we are going to do this favor. This favor isn't required for the Platinum, but it gives you a decent chunk of XP. And all of the um, objectives are actually on the same path that we're going anyway, so you may as well do it for the XP. So again, grab that Rune Reed, grab the armor. Then we're going to go around the corner here. You're going to find a shop. So we have another shop here. You can reclaim any items from the chest if you need to, or buy those shields now if you wanted. Just get them out of the way. We're going to head to our next artifact, and this is our 14th one. We're going to make our way northeast, and you're going to see a Berserker gravestone there, but you can ignore that for now. We're going to then climb up this wall, make our way down inside, and we're going to find the artifact. We are going to do the Berserkers as we go through the game, so that way it's less backtracking. And ultimately, they're not too hard with the checkpoint system and all of that if you have that on and you're struggling. After you grab the artifact, head back to your sled, head east, and once you go east, you're going to eventually find this little barricade you can jump over, this little wooden beam. Jump over that, and then you can lift up a pillar. That way you know you're going the right way. It's going to take you to the Shores of Nine. Now, while you're in the Shores of Nine, head left. There's some bramble here that you can burn out of the way, but don't go that way just yet. We're going to actually go under this wreckage. Go to the other side, take out the enemies on the other side, and then under this bramble is going to be our next piece of armor. So these are just some little upgrades for you, just to have a little bit better armor throughout the story. We're going to grab one of our rune reeds for that quest that we're doing for the XP. So that should be two of four. Make your way back through the wreckage, and then we're going to go the way that we burned the bramble at the start here. So go through where you burned the bramble before jumping into the wreckage. Head down in the stairs here, and you're going to see a climbable area that leads up there. And that's where you want to go. We're not going to get the chest just yet. We're going to go up that climbable spot that I just showed you. We're then going to climb this chain. Now, the story objective is this way as well anyways, so there's that. But what you'll do is you'll come over here. You'll see the chain that we need to move. And then what we'll do is we'll drop down this ledge and then pull out your axe. We're going to get our next raven here. So before interacting with the chain, we'll just quickly grab it so we don't forget. Try and get a good angle. There we go. Perfect. So that's going to be your 11th one. And then you can go ahead and move the chain. Now here shortly, we're going to get our first upgrade to that amulet. Again, that was for a trophy. So there's seven of them. And basically, it's the Jewel of Yggdrasil. And whenever you get one of these, you can go to the blacksmith to upgrade your amulet. So we need seven of them. After you move the chain, we can then bust open this barricade. We don't go through there yet. We actually want to turn back around, go down the stairs, and inside this chest, after you clear all the enemies, is going to be our first upgrade. So this should be the jewel. So make sure you grab those. That is for a trophy. And then under the staircase, you can jump over that ledge there and then grab another artifact. All right, so there's another artifact there. You can then jump back to where we came from. And we're going to make our way towards the quest objective, but also to the, the chest back at the start. So we can finally open this chest. So grab the quest item here. Make sure you don't forget it. And then open up the gate to your right. 
So there's going to be half of a key. You can see the bell there that we need for the chest as well. Open up this gate and then we're going to line ourselves up at the chest. So from the chest to the left, you're going to find the C. Turn around, you're going to find the N. And call it back after it hits and you can hit the R there. Again, if you hit the N first, for some reason, it gives you a little bit more time. So if you find that being a bit tricky, just hit the N. That's going to be another horn for us if you've been following along. If you've been grabbing different chests than me, it could be an apple. But if you've been following along and grabbing the same ones, it'll be a horn. After that, we can go back up the climbable area that's just next to the chest. Jump all the way to the top. And now it's going to be different since we moved the chain. And you're going to be able to find this artifact. So your first time around, it'll take you to that raven. And then your second time up, you're going to find this artifact. Make your way back outside of everything, going back to the main area of the Lake of Nine and grab your sled. You're going to see a gold helmet in front of us. Take the sled towards the gold helmet. This is where you're going to find that optional quest we're doing for the XP. So you're going to find a rune read. But you're also going to find your last piece of armor. You can go ahead and equip all of these. They're just little upgrades for now, just to make the game a bit easier for you. So go ahead and upgrade them, make Kratos all drippy drip. Get them all dripped out. So fresh is so clean, clean. He's part of Outcast. Bro, stop. We get it. Like the motherfucker, good dress. Shortly after grabbing our last piece of armor and our third rune read for that quest, if you make your way to the left side of the helmet, you'll see these kind of icicles hanging down and a doorway. Break the icicles here. You can just roll through them if you need to. You don't need to be all flashy like me. Fucking show off. And then after that, you can just grab this little artifact on the ground. That's already your 17th artifact, guys. Like, oof, so beast. Then make your way outside or, or get stuck completely on Freya for some reason. And we're going to go into our first stronghold. There's a trophy to go to all four of them. So again, this is just on the right side over the barricade and then take out the raiders inside. All right, so take them all out and then you will find a chest with a new runic attack in it. I personally like this one, so you can grab that as well if you'd like. And then you can make your way outside of the stronghold now that we've completed the first one. There's a favor for it or a quest as well, so you'll know you got credit if it says one of four. Now we're going to go for an artifact. See, animal instincts, it should start automatically. So that's for the raider camps. We're going to head over to this little kind of... I don't know what the hell this is, bro. There's a staircase, okay? It's a little formation of rocks with a staircase. We're going to go up to the very top and we're going to grab the next artifact. After grabbing the artifact, make your way back to your wolves. And just in case you got lost, I'm going to open the map up here for you so you can see where we're at. You can see the raider stronghold on the map. And then if I zoom in, you can see exactly where we are. This is where we got that artifact. Now follow the marker up here to the king's grave area. You're going to get attacked by some enemies. Take them out and then grab the hilt. This is going to be the side quest for the Berserkers. So make sure you grab that. After you grab that, we can then head up towards this little pathway here. You can loot this little side chest if you'd like. But the main thing we want to do here is open up this little secret path here. So press square to get Freya to open it up. And you kind of want to make your way towards this mystic gateway. So there's the gateway, but then there's also this shortcut grapple. Knock this down. And then you can jump off, make your way around the left side here and get back to your sled. Now our next area is going to get us a raven, a stronghold, and a chest. So nice bit of stuff there for us. Get the dopamine going. You're going to go down the sled here. The sled, bro. Oh my god. Ah, You want to go down the slope. Go all the way down. Make a left. And then it's going to curl back around. This is where one of the raider strongholds is kind of hidden away. And there's also a raven here. So go ahead and park your bad boys right here. Jump off and then you'll see the raven to the right. Kind of near this gate looking thing. Go ahead and take him out with the axe. And then make your way inside the raider stronghold. So this is our second of four. Now when you're in here... Go ahead and take them out real quick, and then we can start doing the things necessary for the chest. There is a legendary chest in the corner, so go ahead and grab that. It's going to be our heavy runic attack. Definitely recommend upgrading this one. It's super beast. 
All right, after sorting that, make your way back over towards the chest. You're going to find some bramble that you need amplified to burn. So go ahead and use the arrow and then burn it. Jump down over here to grab the bomb. And with the bomb, you're going to throw it down this little cavern area here. And you should be able to hit that and get it lit. Try a few times if you need to. The next one's actually behind the ore right here. Sometimes you can throw it directly over the ore and it'll hit it in the background. But if you do what I did, just chuck another one. That'll light it. And then our last one, since you moved the bramble, you can just yeet it over there. And then you can climb up and get your reward. Yeah, that's nice. So chest number nine already. So again, that was three for one, always good. You can make your way back outside, hop on the wolves, or on the sled rather. I don't think they'd be too happy if you got on the wolves. Yo, why am I Tokyo drifting, bro? Chill the fuck out. So under the bridge here is going to be a little ledge you can climb up. And next to the dead body here is going to be our next artifact. Game kind of dodged out there and wasn't letting me pick it up. But go ahead and grab that. Jump back on the sled. And then we're going to head to the right from this spot here. So the bridge is directly above us. You're going to go under it and then hug the wall to the left. If you hug this wall to the left, you're going to find our final rune read for that quest to get the free XP from. And you're also going to find another diggable item. This is for a enchantment, I believe, for the amulet off memory. And you can just, you know, pop that in your amulet if you like. There you go, 750 XP for, you know, basically doing nothing. I was trying to show you the enchantment, but it opened every fucking menu except for the enchantment one. So as you can see on my amulet, I can then put Jotunheim's Essence, and that's going to be another enchantment towards our stats. Some of these have a set bonus as well, so they're really good to have. But after grabbing that and getting your free XP, we're going to make our way down the hill a bit more. Jump off the sled. Jump over this ledge. You're going to have a little mini boss here. Go ahead and take him out. He's going to give us some decent supplies, and he's pretty easy. All right, after you take him out, make sure you loot everything, and then we're going to head downwards. So around the left side here, go all the way down. You should see the story marker as well, because the sled will be on this side now. The game's pretty smart like that. Any of your travel stuff will just kind of be where you're going. Hop on the sled, make your way around the corner here, and then you'll see this little cave. Go inside the cave. We're only going to grab the raven, so don't you know? Don't go all the way in, but just go ahead and grab the raven. That's going to be our 13th one. Then you can jump right back on the sled. We're going to pop a Yui. Turn around, and directly behind us is going to be our next raider outpost. These kind of stand out because you can see the little spike barricades. So... Grapple your way up, go through the shimmy, and then take out all the enemies for our third raider camp. After you've killed them all, you can then leave by going up the ledge here. And then you're going to find an exit. There's a chest and everything you can loot too if you'd like. But go ahead and exit. Jump on the wolves again or the sled. And then the next area we're going to go is for a raven. So in order to get the next one, you're going to see a path that goes down to the left. We don't want to go there yet. We're going to go there a bit later. For now, we're just going to go all the way down. We're going west. So from Tears Temple, we're going west. Then we're going to start going to the left a bit. So still just slightly left of west. Southwest, really. Keep going southwest. Eventually, you'll hit another ledge where you can jump over and dismount. So dismount, jump over the ledge, and before you progress any further, after jumping that ledge, just turn to your left. You're going to find a wrecked ship with a raven chilling inside of it. After grabbing that raven, turn around and you can head towards the story objective to get Freya to open the wall there. You'll get attacked, but go ahead and kill them, and then hidden around the side, it's, it's a little bit hidden, is that chain. Climb up it. You'll find a blacksmith, you can go ahead and buy a resurrection stone or anything you think you might need. And then you progress to this area here where you have all these grapples. So grapple your way across, you're going to find a chain that will operate this lift. But on the lift with the grapple is actually a raven. So go ahead and grab the raven before we do the lift. 
and then you can activate the chain that's going to bring the grapple up and then you can grapple to the other side when you get to the other side you're going to get attacked by some enemies just go ahead and quickly take them out and as you come down here there's going to be another attack of some enemies just go ahead and quickly take them out and then grab our 20th artifact after that you can then use the shock arrow to open a new path and then just keep progressing through this area as you get towards the quest objective you're going to find a chest that you can loot Inside this chest is a runic attack. You can quickly equip that if you'd like, since we didn't have this for the axe. So you finally have one for the axe, so it's definitely worth equipping. And then we can find our other key half. So you remember that key half we grabbed earlier? This is for another one. And then you can make your way around and then down the level, just going all the way back down until you make it to the wolves again. Get on the wolves. Again, you can pause this if you need to, but yeah, you just go down and you'll eventually be back out where you initially were and just get on the sled. Now we're going to go towards that slope area that I said we weren't going to go down yet before. Now we're going to finally go down there. So you can see it's here. It's just to the left of Tyr's Temple. So it'd be south of Tyr's Temple. And you're also going to get a mystic gateway here. Then you're just going to climb up here and as you do you're going to get attacked by some enemies. Quickly take them out and then head over to the right side of the shield. Use your grapple to then move it to the right. We're going to then climb to the very top. There's a chest here, so what we're doing is sort of setting us up to be able to loot that chest. Make your way all the way up to the top. Once you're up here, you're going to find that there's a jar or whatever you want to call it. You can blow it up. So blow up the ore so that way the pillar falls down and then just jump right back down. That's all we really needed to go up there for, at least for now. Then we're going to go to the left side of the shield and we're going to make it go to the left this time. This will allow us to climb up to the left side. So just look for where you can climb. Make our way to the very top again. And then head left. Now once you get up here, you get attacked by some small fry, like a couple nightmares and stuff like that, nothing too crazy. Quickly take them out. And then what we'll do here is you can see our first um, rune that we need to get for the chest. So just go ahead and aim up towards the top after you take out the enemies. You should be able to light it from there. Make sure it's lit and then jump up the ledge nearby. Go through this doorway. This is where that pillar was and now we can throw the pillar down. So the pillar is going to be stuck there, so that way the shield won't move. Go ahead and grapple back down after moving the pillar. So you lit one of the torches or the brazier, and then you also move the pillar. Now before you move this, there's going to be another one you can light. Go ahead and light it and then move it to the right. And since you have that pillar in the way now, the shield is going to stop perfectly for us to get inside. And then all you have to do is freeze the gear and shoot an arrow to keep it frozen. Make sure it's the runic arrows or whatever they are, the pink fairy ones, and then go ahead and freeze the other side. That'll keep the gate open long enough for you to open it with the little chain there, just smack it with a weapon. You still have to kind of be quick, so just make sure you go through the gate quickly. Then use those same arrows to line up on the wall, and then light the first one until it goes all the way down. That's gonna open the chest, but we'll just grab the chest on our way out. So for now, just loot this chest instead. You're going to get a whetstone, which is used to upgrade phase weaponry. Then go ahead and burden the bramble. Go through the gate here that we have the key for. So this is what that key halves were used for. Once you go through, you have a little mini boss type fight. And then you can climb the chain. Once you climb the chain, at the very top, you can then smash through and you're going to get one of the lost pages. Now, a lot of these lore you don't really need to collect in the game. But for this one, you do. There's four of them. So grab that one, as I said, smash to the floor. And then on your way out, we're going to read this lore tablet here. The reason we're reading this one is it's part of a quest. And then on our way out, we're going to grab that chest that we didn't grab. So that one should be open. Up. Jesus Christ, dude, why is it so bright in some areas? Anyways, it should be open now that you've done everything. So go ahead and grab this. Make sure you don't forget it. All right, so after we grab that chest... We're then done with this area, so what we'll do is we'll get back on the sled. So there's a few things you should have grabbed there. Just make sure that you did grab all of them. So there was a chest, 
you had the lost page and you had a few quest items so just grab all of that now we can head up the slope we're gonna make our way around the temple again this time we're gonna go kind of north so instead of going left like we did before we're gonna go a bit more towards the north side and you're gonna find a ledge here so this is directly from Tyr's temple you can see Tyr's temple right there and then here's the ledge again it's towards the north northwest and as you jump in this is gonna be our final stronghold this one has a lot more enemies in it and then also a mini boss will spawn at the end after looting them you can return back to your wolves for a nice trophy then you can head back to the wolves you know give them a nice little pat make them feel appreciated and you will be rewarded with a nice trophy all right so after that scene you're going to jump back on your sled and the trophy should pop now we get to fight our first Berserker. So again, you might remember that gravestone a bit earlier when we passed this shop. You're gonna make your way over here. The animal instincts favor should be completed. You're gonna find the gravestone and this is our first Berserker. Now a reminder, they can be a bit hard. Um, some require pairing, things like that. But if you're on easy, there's also some other ways you can go about it. You can go into your settings in accessibility and you can turn on evade assist, which gives you more iframes, which is your invincibility frames. And then you also get mini boss checkpoints. So if you get a berserker to half health and you die, when you go back in to try him again, he's going to be at half health. So yeah, it's pretty fucking broken, but um, there you go. So if you're struggling that bad, you can go ahead and use it. And the iframes alone will be handy for you if you're struggling on dodging their attacks. I do recommend parrying anything you can. It makes it a lot easier. Ultimately, okay, as I get hit, I'm garbage. Now, I find the best way to take them out as well is to use all your runic abilities, build up your runic meter, and then press L1 in triangle. Dude, I'm missing everything, so maybe I'm the worst person to give you tips on it. But as you can see, you're building up your meter there, and then when you press L1 triangle, it's going to give your weapon a buff, and it does a shitload of damage. That's pretty much all you do. Rinse and repeat, block and dodge when you can. Yellow, you can obviously parry, and then red, just try and dodge. After you defeat him, that's going to be our first one knocked out. And then we're going to head over to this area that's past the shop. So you can see the shop there and you'll know you're in the right area because there is a chest at the bottom of the mountain. Don't worry about the chest yet. You actually want to climb to the very top of the mountain, kill the enemies there, and then grab the raven. There's a raven directly on top. So again, up north from the shop, grab the raven at the top of the mountain. Ignore the chest for now. And then after killing the mini boss, you're going to get your next jewel, which is for the amulet upgrade. Now we can actually get the chest. So on our way back down the mountain after doing the mini boss and all of that. And as you're going down, you can find the runes that you can light to, for the chest. So go ahead and light the end there and use the grapple to jump down. After that, you're going to find our next one. So go ahead and use that and then grapple down again. And then to the left, you're going to find the last one. And then the chest is just directly to the left of it. So just turn around and then loot the chest. You'll also get a quest complete as you go down since we did that little area up there. After being back on the bottom of the mountain and grabbing the chest, make your way back down to that shop that had the mystic gateway and then travel to Sindri's house. We're gonna grab a side quest from Ratatouille here that's um, used for a trophy as well. So make sure you grab this so then that way while we're out, you know, getting the collectibles and playing the game, we can grab them at the same time. After you grab the quest, there's gonna be the trap on the ledge here, the tree. Make sure you grab that as well so you can actually use it. So you need to have the trap, so make sure you pick that up and then you can head inside. Continue through the story until you're with Freya again and you end up in this area, the Merker Tunnels. And after a crawl space, you're gonna see to the right where you can destroy some crates is going to be our runes that we need. There's one to the right, and then as you go through the doorway near the chest, there's another to the left. Go past that one to the left still, and then you can break the beer keg that's going to make alcohol go on the floor and then you can put a rune there on the side and then just light it and then that should light the last one in order to open the chest so again all three of them are right there pretty easy to find after you grab your horn or whatever the case may be make your way through to the forge you're going to be with Brock so again enjoy the story up until this point you can see a giant bell mechanism to the right there but to the left on a cliff is going to be a raven so it's Raven number 17, go ahead and grab that. After some more story, you're gonna have a new weapon. 
use the weapon to fill the slots so that we can use them to get up on the cliff. So again, you just chuck the spear in them and go across and you're going to find our first rift. So this is our first Lindworm. This is for the trap we just grabbed when we went to Sindri's house from Ratatouille. So all you do is open them, open up the rift or whatever. Okay, this one was being a dick. But once it lets you open it and then loot it, so make sure you loot it as well because it gives you some supplies. After that, continue through the story. You're going to get attacked by some ogres. Kill the ogres and then Brock will open up his shop nearby. The ogres actually drop our next jewel, so make sure you pick that up as an amulet upgrade. And then you can activate the zip line and then head down. Now, there's a new type of chest that we can open. You're going to see these runes here. You have to use the spear on them because you can throw up to five spears and you have to break them all at once. So make sure they hit the actual runic statue or whatever you want to call it. And then the chest is back here. So go ahead and hit this one that's to the left of the chest. And then there's one to the right of the chest, just on the cliff. And once you have the spear in all three of them, just go ahead and activate it. Just go ham on it. I don't know why the fuck I spam triangle like that. Jesus, dude, you need to chill, Kratos. So again, after blowing up all three at once, it's going to activate the chest and then you can open it. And then we can go on to our second berserker. So as you progress through the story again, you're going to go up a train cart and then you'll be in this area here. And as you can see, you'll find a gravestone. So it's the same tips as before, you know, use a resurrection stone if you need to, and then use that checkpoint thing that's super broken. After you defeat him, you can then make your way over to the mystic gateway. And you need your spear out to do that because then you just got to create a path to swing across. Dude, I am trash. So go ahead and swing across. You're going to see Durlin. You can go ahead and speak to him for the favor progression. And then after you speak to him, we're not leaving through the Mystic Gateway yet. We're going to start finally doing some cleanup. So this is completely off of the story path. We're going to jump down the chain and we're going to just clean up this area as much as we can now. So that way later on, we only have to come back for a little bit. So we're going to jump inside our boat. There's going to be a dew here, which again, they're not required for the platinum, but they are nice little upgrades. So once you grab that, we're going to keep making our way east. So go east down the river here, and then you're going to find an opening to the left side. Start heading left. It's going to be a bit northeast now. You'll make your way into this area here. You're going in between northeast all the way down. You're going to find another opening, and then we're going to go right. So back towards sort of east. And then you're going to find a dock or a beach. So go ahead and beach the boat. Now, immediately after you get out of the boat, there is going to be a lot of enemies there. But what we're going to do is we're going to grab our axe. We're going to destroy the rune here to the right. We're going to head over to the left of the boat. You're going to see another one behind the geyser there. You can get a good view on it from here. Go ahead and break that. You can also use the spear for these now too, which might make it easier instead of chucking the axe. Take out the enemies. And now we only need one more, and it's actually hidden behind the geyser over here near the chest. So aim around there. You can kind of see it sparkling. That'll be our last one, and then we can open up the chest. So we've already got nearly half of the chest needed for the platinum, which is always good. After you grab that one, we're then going to make our way to the next area. So from the chest, you're going to find this chain and Freya should be kind of hovering around it. Climb up the top of the chain here. This is going to take us to our next area that we need to go to. You're going to find a vent that you can chuck a spear into, and then that way we can climb up. Now, once you get up here, ignore the spirit. We don't actually need that favor. And then grapple yourself across. You can loot the chest and stuff like that, like I've said before. Jump across, and then we're going to find a chisel kind of stone here that we can use. Use the chisel, and then draw the rune on there. Now, once you've done that, it's going to cause this hammer of the statue to lift. Well, once you interact with it with square, then you're going to find a chest and this is going to have the quest item inside. So again, you're going to use the chisel stone, interact with this and then grab the quest item. Then you're going to head down into this tunnel. Now in this tunnel, there's a few enemies. Just go ahead and quickly take them out. And then what we'll do when we're here 
is there's going to be a raven right before the gold ore there. So you can go ahead and bomb that for the chest. Then grab the chest. And then we also want to grab the raven before we leave this spot. That way we don't forget it. So you're going to get a seed half. Muspelheim seed half. Grab that. And then you can see the gold ore here. Bust through that gold ore and immediately on the left, once the smoke clears, you can see the raven hiding behind the tree. Take him out for our 18th raven. After you grab that raven, go ahead and go down the tunnel until you find a rift for our next lindworm. <laughs> Alright, so that should be your second one captured. There's going to be another berserker coming up, so it'll be our third berserker. But make sure you grab this. Also make sure you loot it for the materials. And then you just want to keep going forward. It's all pretty linear. Again, you're going to lift the stone. And then you'll find a chest before going down the chain. So let's loot the chest. And then you can go down the chain back to the boat. Now we need to make our way to the berserker. So to do that, go down this chain. And then you can see the boat down below. It's actually on a different island, so we're going to hop on the boat here, and we're going to sail over there now, so just follow me. Where we want to go is north. You'll see this zip line here as well that kind of goes into the water. And we're going to go all the way down. Still going north through this little gap here. You're going to come up on this island here. Go ahead and dock at this beach. You're going to find the gravestone right there in the center. You might have some enemies to kill first, but then we can go ahead and activate the gravestone and kill our next berserker. Now, after you do kill him, there's also a chest here, so we're going to grab that. So again, go ahead and kill him, then we can proceed. You want to use the shock arrow over on the bell to the left. Then you want to throw your axe at this mechanism to make the bell rise, so that way you can hit it. Once it's high enough, then you can quickly switch, hit the bell before it goes down, call your axe back, run over here to the one you shock arrowed, smack that, and then the other one is to the right of the chest behind you. So smack all three of those within the time, and you can get our next item from the chest. So we now officially have half of the chest if you've been following along. And we're also going to grab a raven here. So whip out your spear, create a platform with the vent. We're going to climb up top, make our way around the side. You can again ignore the spirit. And then use the shock arrow here to clear this debris. And then over here, you're just going to find the raven. And you can use the spear, like I said, and make it nice and easy. I just find most of them easier to hit with the spear. So again, it's worth trying it out and seeing if that makes it a bit easier. We've got another lindworm to get. So in order to do that, we're going to throw it on this rock. That's going to break open the geyser. With the geyser pushing that wheel, it's going to make the lift raise high enough for us to get on the grappling hook. We can throw ourselves over to this platform and grab our third Linworm. So we already have half of the Linworms. That's going to be a trophy as well. So not only is it a quest, but it is, you know, required for a trophy. We're going to loot that for the materials. And then we have another Raven in the area also. This one's a little bit hidden. All we have to do is you're going to see this area over here. We're going to grapple across. You can already see a little hole up on this ledge. If you look through the hole, you're going to find the raven. Chuck the spear through or your axe, whatever's easier, and you will get your 20th raven. Then chuck the spear on that rock formation and blow it up to reveal a chain. And then all you have to do is pull down on the chain. That's going to control that so you can freeze it. Then once it's in place, you want to throw an arrow and throw your axe. Well, not throw an arrow, shoot rather. So you can see the geyser's going down, or the lift is going down rather, not the geyser. And then we can freeze the lift downwards. You again want to shoot it with an arrow because we're going to go towards our fourth jewel for the amulet upgrade. Grapple across, and then while it's still frozen, as long as you've been quick, whip your axe out, freeze the geyser, and then you can grapple across. So again, you want to make sure you use those rune arrows so then that way it stays frozen even when you recall your axe. We're going to go up the lift. There are some enemies here, but you can just say peace. 
you can grapple up the ledges and then you're gonna find the chest that actually has the jewel inside so again make sure you loot this because this will be four out of seven towards our trophy and then we'll be coming up on yet another raven so after grabbing the jewel head left you're gonna find a zip line that takes us back to the island once you're back on the island where the berserker was and everything you're just gonna go into your boat and then we're gonna start heading down west so just hugging the right side of the wall going all the way around and we're going west just hugging the right you can loot the stuff as you go by it's just extra supplies and then you'll hit this wall you want to stay on the right side still and eventually as you're going southwest you're going to find a dock as a reference there's a small little island over here behind this dock you can see it there and then go up to the dock and there's going to be a chain right here so it's basically just a dock then a chain and the only reason we're going up here is actually for a raven. There's a side quest, but it's not needed for the trophies. So again, climb up on top. You're going to see the raven right away. Just go ahead and chuck something at it. And then turn around and get right back in the boat. That's our 21st raven. Kind of getting through him. And then we can hop in the boat. And we're going to sail over to that island that we used as a reference point. So it's called Giant Geyser. Go ahead and hop in the boat. We're going to go left. So we're heading east to this small island. The dock is right here on the right side. Go ahead and dock the boat. And you're going to see some ore that we need to explode. Overall, the island's pretty small. There's only a few items we're grabbing on here. So break through this. Make your way up to the top. Eventually, you'll find this one here. Break through that one as well. And that's hiding a shimmy. Go ahead and shimmy across. And eventually you'll hit this puzzle after killing a few enemies. Freeze it with your axe. Go back down and shimmy over to the right. Once you shimmy to the right, you'll be on top of the lift. And then you can call your axe back and then jump through the platform on the ground. When you smash through, you're going to have an enemy to fight, an ogre. So go ahead and take him out and then loot the chest. This is going to have the quest item inside of it. And to the right of this chest is actually a gate that takes us right back to the dock. So we're able to get right back to our boat with ease. And then we're going to be finding another raven. Alright, so make your way back over to the boat. Hop on in. And we're going to sail directly in front of us. So it's going to be south. You're going to see a watchtower in the distance to the right. That way you know you're at the right spot. Keep going south. And this area is called the watchtower. You're going to notice a shop and a mystic gateway as well. Don't worry about them just yet. We're going to head to the right. We're going to destroy the ore here and then climb up this wall. Up this wall is where we actually get our next raven. Now up here, you don't want to go too far to the left or up the platform because then it can trigger some enemies and stuff. Unless you want to fight them. I, mean, I guess you can. But all you do is just come over here to the left. Whip out your spear. You'll see a raven flying around. It's super fucking bright, but there's a raven there. Hopefully you can see that okay. Either way, the raven's there. Make sure you grab him for your 22nd raven. If you've been following along, of course. If you're coming back for cleanup, you know, it'll be a bit different for you. But then we can head through the gate on the opposite side of where the raven was. We're going to hold up this side of the drum or the gong, whatever you want to call it. Have Freya shoot it with an arrow. And then that is going to spawn our missing island in the middle of the ocean. Now we won't be heading there just yet, but as you can see, the island's going to spawn in the middle of the lake. All right, now that we've summoned that island, we can head back over here to knock down the shortcut grapple, jump down, and make our way over to the shop. Now the shop, you can go ahead and loot the chest in case you had some missing items, stuff like that. You can upgrade by a, you know, resurrection stone for berserkers, whatever you need to do. Do it then, and then you can head over to the east. So we're going past the shop. Over to the east, you're going to find this place here called Radsvind Rig. Radsvind's Rig? That's fucking horrible to say. You'll find this place with some enemies. You don't have to actually do the side quests that's here. All you need to do is grapple your way up to the top after killing the enemies. We're going to chuck something at that flame vase thing there. Blow it up and then jump down here to use our shock arrows on the barrel. B 
behind the barrel you can actually see one of the runes that we need go ahead and light it with the blades and then light the last one to the side of the chest so that first one we blew up is actually one of the runes it's just going to light it automatically and this is going to be our 16th chest but don't leave this area just yet because directly above the chest if you noticed there's actually a raven on the crane here go ahead and chuck something at it for our 23rd raven and then after that we can head back towards the shop area so we're just going back this way you should know your way around the map now kind of kind of becoming pros we'll go past the mystic gateway we're not going to go there just yet we're going to go into the boat again and we're going to head over to that island that we spawned which is a giant whale as you can see now the dock is actually over here on the right side of it so go up to the dock and then dock your boat and then you'll climb up on top of him. Now there are going to be some enemies right there. Just take them out and then blow up this little side path. And then on this path here, you can cut one of the kind of chains that are weighing this guy down. And that's all we're doing for this side quest. We're just going through and we're just cutting the chains for him. And after you cut each one, then it'll have this part here with a shackle and you can break it with a weapon. All right, after that's been done, make your way back through the area you came from, so where you blew up that kind of path there. And instead of climbing back down, if you go this way to the right, you can hop over the gap. There'll be a couple little small fry enemies right here. Just take them out. And then you can climb up the wall just to the right of them by using the chain. Once you get up with the chain, you can then see another path going left. So on the wall again, it's a little bit kind of weird looking, but you can climb there. And then you just want to turn forward and then jump up. Climb all the way to the top. This is where we're going to get a raven and an artifact. Now, if you use the spear, you can get this raven a lot easier because as you can see, it's pretty far. But you can chuck the spear pretty far as well. So go ahead and chuck it off the side there and make that raven really easy to get. That way you don't have to mess around. And then we can go ahead and grab an artifact. We haven't grabbed an artifact in a while, so here we go. And this one's actually a Last of Us reference, so there you go. A lot of the artifacts, or at least the poems, are references to PlayStation exclusives, so it's pretty cool. But after you grab that artifact, again, make sure you grab the Raven and the artifact. Head back to where we climbed up. You can make your way back down. So just go all the way down. And this time we're going to go across the path that we didn't go over yet. So we're going to grapple across, make our way around. There's going to be enemies again. Just quickly take them out. And then you'll be able to slide down the chain and cut another chain. So we're cutting the right side of it. And then after you've done all that, that'll be our second of third bindings destroyed. And then there's going to be a nest over here that you can see. Now, if you destroy the nest, there's going to be the bomb mechanisms inside. So after we destroy it, grab one of the bombs that were inside the nest. If you come over here, we're going to free up one of the docks for our boat. So you can see there's a dock there, but we need to destroy the oars so that way we can actually dock. Then we can go back through the gate and then go straight across, climb down the mountain and get into our boat. And we can go to that dock that we just freed up. So to get there, all you do is go around the backside and then end up on the opposite side of the whale and then dock the boat. It's pretty easy. Again, you can pause the video for these parts as you're actually doing them to keep up. Once you get up top and climb all the way up here, you're going to have some more enemies to take out. There's quite a few there. And then go ahead and break the binding. Now, this is our final binding. You can't actually hit it from here. You have to go down this little zip line. So you're going to see these rocks clear out of the way. And then there's going to be a zip line. Take that zip line all the way down. And then that's going to be where his tail is. And you can see the binding there. All right, so once you land, go ahead and break the binding. And you've officially freed him. So now all we need to do is take down this barricade. We're going to walk through here and go left. There's going to be a chain where you can go down. You don't need to really do anything up there. There's a chest or anything like that if you do want to loot it. But make your way into the boat and go to the side of the whale on the left side, and you're going to get your trophy. 
So for doing that quest there, you're going to get the making amends trophy for helping free the whale. And now we can finally continue the story. We've done all the sort of kind of side stuff here for now. And we'll come back a bit later. So continue through the story. You're going to be in Helheim with Atreus. Now this one's right at the start as well. And it's just going to be flying around here. So just go ahead and hit it with the spear. Um, I was clearly cosplaying as a stormtrooper because goddamn, I was missing like crazy. But we eventually got it. We got 25 out of 48. You're going to progress through the story until you get to this chest. This should be your fifth shield if you did buy all of them from the store. If you didn't, just buy them next time you're at the shop. And as long as you follow the guide correctly, you would have grabbed the other ones that are in the chest. And that'll get you another trophy. Keep progressing through until you have to throw your spear into a vent on the right side again. Grapple up onto this ledge and then make your way to the right with that um, spear you just made. And this is going to be our first flower collectible. So there's a trophy for getting one flower in every realm. And this is our first one. So we'll grab a lot of them towards the end when we're doing cleanup. But since we're here now, we're going to grab this one. And then eventually you come to this puzzle where you open the door here with the Atreus. And right here, when you have a left and a right path, instead of going down any of them, just look directly up. And then to the left a bit, and you're going to find our 26th Raven. After grabbing the Raven, you can progress through this story area. Just make your way through. And eventually you're going to be in Vanaheim with Atreus. You're going to go down the left path here after clearing it. And you're going to find a dew that you can grab really quick. After you grab the dew, keep sailing down and follow the quest objective. You'll eventually come through a tunnel here. And you'll see one of these you know, flowers that attack you. But once you're on the outside of the tunnel, turn around and try and look through the trunk with that fucking god-awful blinding light. And then you'll find your 27th raven. And as a reference, in case you're trying, you know, to find that raven and struggling, you'll find a path here that kind of goes right or left. And if you go left, you're going to find a staircase that leads to our next chest. So if you didn't grab that raven, you'll know this by the reference point here. So just keep an eye out for it, really. But you'll be up here with the chest. There's going to be a werewolf to the left side. Just take him out, and then we can start doing the puzzle for the chest. Now the first rune is right here in front of the chest. You just want to hit it twice to the right. That's going to be the first rune. And then the other one's right to the left of the chest. You're just going to need to hit it right once. So first one is right twice. Second one is right once. And then across the gap, you're going to see our final one way in the distance. Try and line up your axe. And you just want to hit that one to the right once. And that should open the chest. So you got right twice, right once, and then right once. Just to try to simplify it, like I said before. And that is chest number 17 already. Slamming through them. Keep progressing through this area here. There's going to be a thief that you're chasing. And when you chase her through this area, you're going to see a vent that you need to put a spear in. But if you go to the left of that vent, you're going to find the raven hiding up in a tree. So make sure you grab the raven and then you can go ahead and proceed by putting the spear in the vent. And eventually you'll be with Freya. Now you'll be leaving Freyr's camp and you can go to the right and you can grab a dew as we're coming through here. Keep progressing through the area till you get to this door. Now this is the area we came from over there to the right. But there's this little side boss here and he actually dropped some material that we need to make one of the relics for a trophy. So go ahead and take him out and then you're going to have a story related boss which I'm not going to show you who it was so that way you can kind of just have some fun. You're going to get a relic which is story related from that boss. And then you'll be back in Freyr's camp. And a side quest is going to trigger where we have to find where Helka is running off to. So you'll see Scent of Survival will be started. Just make your way across and you'll see your boat. Go ahead and interact with the favor and then keep following the objective. So hop in your boat, follow the favor, track it if you need to. So that way you can follow it a little bit easier on the map. You'll come back to this area here where you need to change it to day. And then that way you can make it over to where you put your paper boat now. So eventually you'll be falling from the sky and you drop down in here. That part's pretty quick. So again, you can kind of slow it down if you need to. But all you're really doing right there is doing the scent of survival quest. So just go ahead and track it and follow the quest. Now, when you fall out of the sky and land, you're going to find a mystic gateway. You're going to use that to come back to Sindri's house and speak to Ratatouille for another quest. So press triangle. We're going to get the a stag for all seasons. And this is another side quest. 
Make sure you also press circle and grab this pouch. So you're going to grab the seeds. That's going to be for the actual stags. After grabbing his quest, we're going to fast travel to the Lost Treasury in Midgard Lake of Nine. So Lost Treasury, you can see on the map here, you want to go to the north side. So you can see here, the Mystic Gateway is the Lost Treasury. Then you can just kind of sled up north. And up north here is actually a wall you can bust. Use your spear to break it. And then inside is going to be our fifth relic. Again, our last one was story related from a main story boss. And then this one, we just need to loot behind the wall. So we fast travel to the lost treasury, just so you're not lost. After that, continue through the story yet again. You're going to end up in Muspelheim in Suter's Forge. And you're going to find these enemies guarding a legendary chest. You can go ahead and open the chest. And using that chest as a reference point to the right of it, if you look over here behind this little kind of open rockway, there is a raven sitting on a rock. So go ahead and grab him for your 29th raven. And then you can see the bramble over here as well. Just so that way you kind of know where we're at. And that's where the raven is. You're going to then continue through Muspelheim. It's again, just like the main game. It's pretty linear. You'll see Atreus go over that way, but instead we want to use our spear to break open this entry. Inside here, you're going to find another chest. So this chest, we have to light the torches like usual. And what you do over here is you just shoot your arrows. And you can press your arrows twice to expand them, just in case it's a bit harder to hit. So you can shoot an arrow in the same spot twice to make it bigger. But there you go. We just line that up. We lit the first one. Then you come back inside where the chest is. And what you want to do is line your cursor up to put an arrow in the center. And you can shoot again to make it bigger, like I was saying before. And then you can put one on the right and put one on the left. And then it should trigger it and bring it over to the right side. So go ahead and do that. And then the last one you have left is just above the chest. And you can reach that with your weapon and then open the chest. Now our next one, we're going to have another raven. And it's shortly after a story cutscene. And as the cutscene finishes, my man here is going to walk off. And then you're going to regain control of your character. And then we're going to find our 30th raven. So once you have control of your character again, go left. And then you'll see it perched up on the rock. So make sure you grab him before following the story objective. And then after you've done that, you can just continue the story. Now you can just keep going through the story until you get up to this part here. I recommend going to the blacksmith because they're going to give you some free armor for this quest. So you're coming up on the end of the story. I recommend putting on the armor, like I said, because it's just better stats. And then you get to just enjoy, you know, the story go through it, finish it off. And then eventually you will come to this part here, which is our post-game cleanup. So after the credits, you're going to end up here where it says Beyond Ragnarok. Now this is our end game cleanup section. So again, you should have enjoyed the story and now you're ready to do all the cleanup. We're going to try and go back, you know, to the places that we needed to. But again, since we did minimal backtracking throughout the entire guide, grabbing things along the way, this end game cleanup is going to be a breeze, guys. So all we need to do right off the bat is take the lift here with Freya and head downwards. You're going to get a shit ton of XP for beating the game as well. So you got about 20,000. You're going to get the last remnants of Asgard started, which is another favor. And then all you want to do, as you can see, I'll open up my map here. We're going to go over to the Mystic Gateway here on the Lake of Nine. So take the lift down and go to this Mystic Gateway because we're going to travel to do some cleanup. We're going to go to Freyr's Camp. And from Freyr's camp, we're just going to jump in our boat and head left through this entryway that we cleared up earlier in the story. And we're going to make our way down the left side so it triggers a side quest. So just keep making your way all the way down, hugging the right side. And then the first beach here that you see, you're going to dock on. This is for Pilgrim's Landing. And after you take out the enemies in the area, there's going to be a Berserker Stone. So go ahead and take out the Berserker, and then after you kill him, we can move on with getting the rest of the collectibles in this area. There is a Raven on this island as well. 
So again, take out the berserker. And then once you've done that, we're going to go up the ledge here. You're going to see a boat to the right. Just be mindful of that boat because we're going to come back to it. Now you want to throw your axe at this bridge on the right side. And then you want to also um, shoot an arrow at the bramble across. Now it's kind of being stupid here, but all you have to actually do is put one on the fire after you put it on the bramble and that's going to trigger it and then light the bramble. Then pull out your axe and then hit the last little lock notch there. That'll drop the bridge down. Then you can climb over and then go to this area with all the enemies. After you take out the enemies, you're going to find this little mechanism up above. Go ahead and release it. And then all you want to do is use your blades of chaos to swing it to the right to light the torch on fire. So we're going to swing it over to the right. And then you just want to use your arrows to transfer it to the left side. So there you go. I shot an arrow. I got it to transfer. And then now we just need to grab it again. And I put one on there just in case, just to make sure it triggers. And then it lights the bramble as well. Then all that's left is the lock on the left side and then the right side after the bramble burns. Now, once this drops, you can loot this legendary chest for an optional item. You don't need to use this, but it can be really good. But more importantly, if you saw in the background there, there's our 31st Raven. So there's some grips there for you for the axe, or you can just come over and grab this Raven. After getting the Raven, we can then head back to that boat that I told you to keep an eye on. So we're going to go over to the south side of this island. And again, you'll have some enemies, but you can just run past them. It doesn't matter. They're beneath you. You are better than them. Jump down, make your way into the boat, and we can head to our next area for cleanup. Next up is going to be an artifact, so we're going to head straight down, hugging the right side. Now, you can't really tell, but you can go in this little tree area, and there's a path to the left here. It's a little bit hidden, but once you're inside this giant tree area, head left, you're going to see a staircase. But before going up the staircase, you actually want to go to the left, and before it on the left side is going to be our next artifact. After this artifact, we can then head up the stairs. Now there's some bramble up ahead that we need to get rid of. So that way we can grab a collectible a bit later on. Cause it's going to be from a different side of the island. So you don't have to worry about this rift. You can just ignore that. Make your way over here and jump across. And then you want to line up some arrows to the bramble and then burn it. So just line them up and then burn it. And now that you cleared the bramble, we're going to be able to get a different item later on. So we kind of needed to get that out of the way. So make sure you do that. Don't forget. And then head back towards the rift. And there's going to be a zip line. Take the zip line down and then clear the enemies in the area. Just avoiding the poison. Come around the left side here. You're going to see this building. And on the left side, there's an opening. You want to throw a spear through at the lock. That's going to use a counterweight and open the gate. And then inside here in this chest is going to be our fifth jewel. You can take out the enemies really quick as well. But this is going to be our fifth jewel, which is again to upgrade the amulet so you can have more enchantments on it. And we only have two of those left now. So again, loot the chest and then we can move on to our next collectible, which is an artifact. Make your way back outside. There might be some more enemies spawn like mine was there. Take out the wolves. And then you'll see a gate when you're facing south. So face south and to the left of the gate on this side where you can climb the wall is going to be our 23rd artifact. Then after that, we can make our way back towards the boat. And then hop on in the boat so we can go to our next area. Now our next area is called the Cliffside Ruins. And you can just make your way around the ledge here. We're hugging the right side again, going all the way around until we get to a beach that we can dock at. You can see the zip line there as well, but that's not the beach we want to dock at. We want to dock at the one over here at the bottom of the zip line, and it's the one that also has a shop. So again, you can restock, do what you need to do at the shop, but ultimately you want to hit this rune stone to the right. So directly behind the shop, you want to hit that one to the right because it's going to be for a Nornir chest. 
sail across onto this beach. There is enemies here, if I'm not mistaken, the first time you're here, so just take them out. Run all the way to the back here and then climb up the wall. So again, you hit the rune once to the right, which was behind the shop. And then we climb the wall at the back of this island. We're going to jump over to this platform, then jump to this one, jump to the next platform. And then you're going to see another rune stone down below. You can't see what it's on really, but you want to hit it once to the right. And you're going to see that it took the sigil away from the chest. And then you're going to light the rune arrows across here. Just enough for you to light it on fire and then burn the bramble, releasing the chain. So again, make sure you hit that thing once to the right for the chest and then burn the bramble. Use the shortcut back down. And then we're going to get our last rune, which is over here to the right. There's going to be some more bramble. Just go ahead and line up some arrows. We're going to line up those arrows, go up close to it, and then burn those as well. And as long as you did that, that should free up the rune and then we can hit it with the axe. Again, we're always hitting the right side. It just makes it easier. Hit it once to the right, and that'll be the chest. So again, all of them, we're just hitting once to the right, and that'll unlock our chest. So it's chest number 19. All right, we can head to our next area, which is going to be Goddess Falls. And where we go is the chain that we released earlier from burning the bramble. Make your way over to that chain, climb up to the top, and then use the chisel on the stone. That's going to make the path open up once you press square. Freya is going to clear it by reading the runes. So as you can see, that's going to clear up a path. Then we can take our boat there. So what you have to do is you have to go back to the cliffside ruins dock or the beach and then grab your boat and then we can start heading down. So make your way down the chain, go back to the boat and then we're going to go around the right here. You're going to see a waterfall. That way you know you're in the right area. And then keep going down further and then hugging the walls. It's pretty linear, like there's no other docking places to really go. And then you'll eventually hit the Goddess Falls beach. There you go, Goddess Falls, and then we're going to go ahead and dock here. There are some enemies at the bottom, so just quickly take them out and then we can work on getting our 30 second Raven. After you kill them all, there's going to be a wall you can climb up. Just make your way up to the top, and then you can sit here and try and hit the raven. This one can be a little bit tricky because he does fly a pretty big perimeter. But just wait for him to come by, smack him in this area here. Then you can grapple across, and then there's a climbable wall to the right. So there's a side chest there that you can grab if you want, but then you want to climb the wall to the right. That's going to bring you up to this upper area where there's a chest. And then to get this chest, again, we're just going to line up the arrows on each little platform. Use the blades to ignite it. And then that's going to be one of them done. Our next one, we're just going to grapple over, come to this waterfall. This one requires us to make a few big ones. So all you do is shoot a couple arrows. So we're going to shoot three on the top. And then we're going to shoot three on the bottom. That's going to make it big enough to transfer it over, so I'm not sure what happened there. But then go ahead and ignite it, and that should be good. So we shot three on top and then three on bottom. Now the last one is just over here on the right side, and then you can grab it. Just line up with your arrows. So we're going to shoot that about two times, and then one time here. And that should transfer it and ignite our final rune. So now with all of those ignited, you can then make your way over and loot the chest. That is our 20th chest already, so we're, we're still getting through it. After you've done that, we're going to head back over to where the last one was at. And you're going to find a wall here that you can have Freya interact with. She's going to open up this passageway, and that's going to unlock a new area for us. Once you're in this new area, make your way all the way through. There's going to be a little mini boss and a lot of enemies in the veneer shrine. After you take them out, head over to your left. 
There's going to be some bramble that we can break or burn rather. And then there's a, a little bit of a thing we have to do here with the arrows. We're going to line them up in a row. So then that way we can burn both of these at the same time. So these have to be lit at pretty much the same time. And that's going to cause the door to open. Then you can make your way through the door. We're going to head straight down. You are going to get ambushed by some enemies. And one of them is being healed. So instead of wasting your time with him, quickly run over, shoot an arrow, and burn the bramble. Then you can make your way up to the other enemies on this upper floor. And you'll find the one that's healing them. So you want to take him out first, obviously. Otherwise, they're just going to keep healing and they're kind of annoying. Now, after you take them out, you're going to have this little kind of interaction with Freya. You'll find one of her three belongings. And she's just going to destroy it. After she destroys it, she'll come over to this vine wall and then clear it up for you. And before leaving the area, we want to actually use our chisel on the chisel stone behind it. There's going to be two chisel stone kind of things that are on each side and that's what we need to progress so this will be one of two and it's going to do some partial runes down below make your way back down to the center and then you can head over to them and when you get close to them she's going to try and read it and say you can't but what we need to do from this rune is attack the bridge here on the side to break the lock and you can see the chisel stones up there that's where we need to go so then as you come up here, you want to quickly line up some arrows to burn the bramble and just avoid the plant. Otherwise, he'll be an annoying dick and just keep shooting you. And then go ahead and whip out your axe and break the last lock. Make your way across the bridge now that it's down. You're going to be in a new area here with some more enemies and that plant is still going to be like attacking you. There's going to be some wolves that come out and ambush you as well. And just so you kind of see where we're at. This is the area we first started getting attacked at, and you can kill the plant over here on the right in case it's still spitting at you. And then as you go through this area, they're going to jump through the barricade here. After you take out the wolves, though, you can go through the spot they were hiding in, and you can find your 24th artifact. So again, make sure you grab that artifact. Always got to stress that so you don't you know, have to backtrack again. Then kill the enemies in this area. There's some revenants, and then you will find her second belonging. You can burn the bramble and then wait for her to open up this vine wall. And then this is going to be our second chisel stone. And this is the final one we need to open the bridge. So again, interact with it. That's going to be our final bit of runes that we need for her to use the magic ability to make the bridge. Then you can head down by going through the bramble that we burned. And there's a chain. Make your way over, go over the bridge. There'll be a cutscene, quite a little bit of a cutscene there with Freya, and then you'll get a trophy. So again, go down, read the rune, and then go through the cutscene with Freya. And then after that, you can make your way all the way back to the start of Goddess Falls. So you're going all the way back down the cliff. Once you make it back down the cliff, we can go to our boat. And this time, we're going to go around the right side. So we came from the left side originally when we were coming to Goddess Falls. But now we're going to leave going to the right side. And there's going to be a quest item that we haven't actually got the quest yet, but we're going to grab the quest item before getting the quest just to make life easier. So you'll find this little shoreline here on the inside of this cavern. There's going to be a mysterious orb that's required for a quest and a trophy here on the left side. So grab that and then we can grab our chest. Now in order to do the chest, you want to grab the bomb, clear the ore here. And then what you want to do is come to the shoreline and you're going to see the three gongs that we need to press or the three bells. We're going to do two shots there, two shots in the middle, and then one shot at the right. And then all you need to do is chuck the bomb at one of these to trigger it. That'll allow the bells to be rung and then the chest will open. So it's our 21st chest. Again, you just line up the arrows, throw the bomb, and then make sure you grab that mysterious orb before leaving because that's a quest item that we need for another trophy. After that, we can hop in our boat and keep going down the way we were going. So north, we're going to keep going north, and we have our final little beach docking point here. Go ahead and dock the boat. There shouldn't be any enemies right here. And then if you turn around from where we docked, you can actually see a raven perched on a root. Kill the raven for our 33rd raven. Then you want to break through this wooden barricade. Watch out for all the poison plants. 
and then you can climb the wall. Once you climb the wall, activate the shortcut grapple, and then we can make our way through this tunnel. Now there's an artifact through this tunnel. I'll try and show you where it's at so you don't get lost. You're gonna keep fighting enemies as you go through this tunnel. And you see this wooden barricade we just smashed? That's actually where the artifact is hidden. So keep going through the tunnel until you're getting attacked by even more enemies. And you'll find that wooden barricade, break it, and then you'll find this artifact. So our 25th artifact. And then you can keep going through the tunnel. Now, once you get to the end of the tunnel, there's going to be a chain that goes down. And if you come over here to the right, past this lore marker, then on the tree here that's perched over the water is going to be our 34th raven. After that, you're going to find a chain to lower the bridge, and you'll see the zip line. Just take the zip line down. You're going to go to the blacksmith here. Now, speak to her and go through all of her favor dialogue. So keep pressing triangle for the favor. You're going to get a Viking funeral, which is going to be a trophy, but then also interact with her again. And then it's going to be about the mysterious orb that we picked up. And since we already picked it up, we can turn it in and get a trophy. After getting your trophy for that and getting the Viking funeral quest, go towards the mystic gateway and behind it against the wall here is going to be the 26th artifact that's hidden away. So it's just hidden behind the gateway. After you grab it, you can then activate the gateway and we can go to Vanaheim. You want to go to the plains. And after you make it to the plains, you can jump off the wall there. We're going to run to the left side here. You'll see a bucket hanging from a tree just as a reference. And then once you climb up this ledge, you're going to find a spirit. Now you want to speak to the spirit because if we do the quest, after we get two fragments of what that item is, it's going to create the artifact, which is needed for the trophies, of course. All right, so now that you've got that quest started, we're going to then make our way down the ledge over here. Drop down, and then you're going to find another ledge that you can grapple over to, or jump over to, rather. Jump over, and then you can grab the item if you need to, if you need health, and then you can grapple over this way. We're then going to grapple our way up the wall, and then we're going to head left. And there's going to be another quest that we're going to grab here. So right here, you're going to find a dead animal. Go ahead and interact with it. You'll have some dialogue and then we will start the quest. Now we need to find another dead animal, which is just up to the west side right here, northwest. And it's up against the rock. So it's not too far from the previous one. Just go a bit northwest and you'll see it against the rock. And then that means that we have the two that we need and we need to look for the soul eater. Now soul eaters, they just look like a pile of rocks, so they blend in really easily. And for example, I can see mine in the distance there. It's a pile of rocks. So just keep an eye out, look in the general vicinity. Once you find it, go ahead and kill it to complete the quest. It's called in plain sight. So make sure you complete it. You can see where we're at now as a reference. We're on the other side of the pond opposite of where that dead animal was. And then you'll find this path here. Now going down this path has some of those poisonous plants, so just go ahead and destroy them. We're then gonna run northwest all the way down, go down this cliff side, and then you're gonna find a little cavern kind of cave thing. Now down below is gonna be another raven. So before grappling across, we're gonna grab the raven, and then we'll grapple over, and then we'll grapple to the other side. Now you're going to see a crystal here on the side of the rock. Just go ahead and smash it for some crystalline shards, which is used for crafting. And then watch out for the poison plants again, as always. And then make your way around the rock and into this little tunnel. You're going to find quite a few of these poison plants. So you can just go through, break them, and then you're also going to get attacked here. So take out all the enemies and keep making your way down the tunnel. And at the very end of the tunnel, you're going to find the quest that we've been doing. Now this gives you a scroll and once we have both of the scrolls, it's going to give us an artifact. So that's what we really need. After we grab the scroll, make your way back outside of the tunnel from where we came. You're going to find a wall you can grapple up to. Just go up top and then make your way over to the left. You're going to see a celestial altar. Now these altars are where we change from night or day. So now we can control it from going night to day. Go ahead and make it nighttime, and then when it's nighttime, run over to the left side here, sort of looking north. 
and you can throw one of your spears at the rock to get the one behind and then there's the other two in front so run around the side here and since we had a different angle from up above we were able to put a spear on the back side of this wall and then blow up all three and it should break the wall now watch out you might get attacked by a dragon Ooh, but you see that clutch ass block that deserves a like on the video in itself don't you think but after that grab the artifact down below you're going to get jumped by an ogre kill the ogre and then again please make sure you pick up that artifact that was on the floor there then we're going to make our way over to this gate that is now accessible since it's nighttime. You'll see that the plants aren't blocking the gate. You can then open it, make your way through. Watch out for the poison plants yet again. Keep making your way down this linear path. Now you're going to get to this area here where the road kind of forks off. Now instead of going left, we're going to go right, but above us is actually another crystal. Throw a spear at it, break it, and then you can head through this area. And then shimmy through here for a boss fight. Now after you kill the boss, you can loot all of its items. And then there's going to be a raven in the boss arena. So once you kill the boss, right now we're facing east, which is where we need to climb up at. But instead of climbing up, we're going to go over here to the northwest side of the boss arena. And you're going to find a little hole. And in that hole is going to be a raven. So it's 36 out of 48. We don't have too many now, guys. You just got to keep at it. And in this boss arena, after you get the raven, there's also going to be a linworm. So we have another linworm, and it's just near this crystal. So grab the crystal for some more crafting materials. And then to the right of the crystal is going to be the linworm rift. So grab that, and then make sure you loot it as well. After catching the Lindworm and also looting the Rift, we can then make our way to the east side of the boss arena. Now this is where you can actually climb up the wall. So go over to the east side. You can see it there. This is where we're going to finish off the quest for finding Burger. Bro, did I just say Burger? I think his name is Burger. Burger. <laughs> oh my god, it's late. I'm trashed. That quest actually makes a reference to Dark Souls as well, which is pretty cool. But anyways, help Bergir or whatever, and then come down here for our first stag. So that should be one out of four stags. Please make sure you interact with it. And then after that, you can interact with the Mystic Gateway. This isn't for us, though. This is for the end of his quest. So we're going to send him through the gateway. And then instead of us going there from the gateway, we'll go north to knock down a shortcut grapple. And then from the shortcut grapple, we'll actually turn around and go southwest through this tunnel. You're going to find a crystal against the right side of the wall. Again, make sure you grab that stag. I know that came by pretty quickly. And then we're going to go for our other raven. So what you need to do is break the barricade in this tunnel. As you come outside the other side of the tunnel, go left and you're going to find the raven. And then from the raven, if you just go south, you're going to find another crystal. So grab the shards for crafting materials. You might get attacked roughly around there. So as you can see, here's where the tunnel is. And then we have the crystal in front, just as a bit of a reference so you're not lost. We're going to go get the next artifact, which is just up ahead. All right, so I'm going to show you where we go from here. We're going to pass the pond where we killed that soul eater that was killing the animals in the area. We're going to keep running all the way south. You're going to find a path here on the left side as you're running south. And as you run over here, you might get attacked by some enemies again. Maybe like one or two. Nothing crazy. Just fucking yeet him across the map there. And then you can run south. Go across the gap. And you're going to find an entrance over there with two torches. We're going to go over the gap here. Climb up the ledge, and this is where we're going to be towards our next artifact. Make your way up and over here. Once you jump the gap, there's going to be some enemies. Take them out, and then again, jump the gap. Climb over the ledge, avoid the poison plant, and then hug the left side to avoid the next one. Then you can climb over the wall until you get to the other side. 
Then watch out for that poison plant, and to the side of it is going to be our next artifact. So just interact with that for another poem book. All right, and then from here, all we're going to do is turn around. So just go be behind you, basically. You're going to find a wooden barricade you can knock down with your weapon. Climb up it. Make your way until you see a mystic gateway. And then you're going to find a way where you can go left or right. So we're going to go right and wrap around into the jungle. We're going to drop down using the grapple wall. And then we're going to head straight ahead to that crystal. You can see a crystal here on the side. Just smash that for some more shards. And then after grabbing that, head around this purple poison. Make sure you don't go in it because it deals a shit ton of damage. You're going to get jumped by some doggos. Kill them really quick and then climb the wall. After you take them out and climb the wall, you're going to get a quest called Return of the River. So we're going to keep heading around the right side here. We're going to drop down. Make our way into this open area. There's going to be some dogs. Go ahead and quickly take them out. After you kill the dogs, keep heading west or southwest. And then climb the ledge and you're going to find a lift. So you're going to have to burn the bramble to activate the lift. Ride the lift to the top. And once you get up here, you're going to have a lot of enemies. So take them out and you're going to find a hidden path behind some crates. Blow up the wall so that way that path is unlocked and then make your way through it after killing the enemies. You want to quickly burn the bramble there because it has a healer behind it in case these guys are healing. Or you can chuck them in the water like I did. And then once you kill the enemies you can interact with the quest item here. Alright, so just go through all this dialogue, start the quest, and then that way we can make progress towards it. All right, you then want to head west until you get to the chain. Drop down into this pit for a little mini boss fight. Go ahead and do the mini boss fight and then head back towards the lift. Take the lift back down. And then as we come to the fork in the road, we're going to go to the right. And on the right, there's going to be a boat. We want to hop in the boat. And it's going to be Trail of the Dead that starts. So it's another side quest. All right, after jumping in the boat, we're going to head left and we're going to beach onto this island here. So go ahead and dock on this island. You're going to see a chest and some enemies. Take out the enemies and then we can go for the chest after grabbing this quest. So there's a quest to the right of the chest. Grab the quest and then we can hit this one to the right. It's just above the quest giver. So we're hitting that one to the right twice. Then you're going to come up over here. You're going to burn the bramble by using a rune stone or a rune arrow, sorry. Switch to your axe and then hit that one to the right. After that, then grapple up on the wall nearby. Turn around and on top of the altar, you can find our last one. And you just want to hit right twice. So it was right twice, right once, and then right twice. So once you've done that, then you can open up our 22nd chest for our next collectible. All right, we're going to be done with this island for the moment. So we will come back to it, but at the moment we're done. Because what we're going to do is we're going to go to the altar. We're going to turn it to nighttime. Actually, I think it's nighttime now. Am I stupid? I'm stupid, huh? I'm a stupid guy. Yeah, so you want to turn it to daytime. So go ahead and switch that to day before we leave. Hop in your boat and then go around to the right. Now we're going to hug the wall to the right, keep going to the right, you'll find this little island that kind of arches, and then you'll find a dew. So you know you've gone the right way if you find a dew under that arch. And then you're also going to see the beach that we're going to dock at just straight ahead. So we're going east, and then we're going to dock here after grabbing that dew. You're going to see a crystal hanging off the cliff to the right. Go ahead and attack that and then kill the little enemies here in the area. After you take them all out, what we're going to do is head around this way. Go all the way down. You'll see the boat there as a reference, but we're going to go down the path to the right. There's some more bramble that we need to get rid of just so we have that area unlocked. So line up your rune arrows and again, you can throw multiple arrows if it helps and makes it a bit bigger. My man would not have enough length. Trust me, I know how that feels. Always like, is it in? Is it in? 
Whatever. After burning the bramble, come back to your boat. And then to the right is going to be a very small passageway, but you can actually go through there with your boat. So take your boat through there, go all the way down, and then eventually you'll come to this dock. We're going to dock here because we're going to grab an artifact in the area. And in order to do that, you'll go through this little shimmy area. And then there's going to be a battle with some enemies. There's like some ogres and stuff, nothing too crazy. And then once the fog there cleared up for me, you can find the artifact over in the corner. This is where the quest giver will spawn as well. And since we grabbed both of those, that's going to be an artifact. And from that artifact and this little arena where the enemies were, there's actually a raven to the south. He's just up on the wall or the ruins there. So take out the raven and that leaves only 10 left. And then we can get our next stag. So in order to do that, from the same area where the raven was to the west side is going to be a wall we can break down. And then we're going to head west, jumping over the gap, and then making our way all the way down this path. All of this is, again, really linear. And then you're going to find the stag at the very end. Interact with the stag. And then after he gets sent home, that'll be our second one. Then we can keep making our way down the path, hop over here, and then let the chain go down. We're going to need this chain for later, so don't go down it just yet. Ignore me. But you definitely want to knock it down because we're going to need it. Then we're going to head up this way, go up the ledge, watch out for the spitting flowers, and then jump over, and you're going to find a spot you can shimmy through. So as a reference, you can see this big footprint. And then if you go over here, you can shimmy through the wall. After the shimmy, then you'll be in this area here and you just want to drop down in the hole so we can set up a lure for the boss. You'll find your next jewel. You just drop down into this hole. You need to pull out your ax and you need to be pretty quick. You have to recall it after hitting that and then freeze it really fast so you can get out. You're going to find some crystals to the side for upgrades and things like that. And also keep your ax in there. Don't recall your ax just yet. So leave your ax in there we're going to use it in a second. Now what you want to do is come over here to the chest and grab our sixth jewel. So we'll only need one more after this to fully upgrade our amulet, which will be a trophy if you've been following along. And after grabbing the jewel, you want to come over to this gate and open it up. Now there's going to be some dogs outside and we need to lure one of them into that cage. So that's why I had you leave your ax in there. So again, leave the ax in there. Try and lure one of them over. You can block and stuff if you need to. Make your way into the cage. And then once they're in there, just go ahead and call it back. Now you only need to trap one of them because we're going to use it as bait to spawn the enemy that we're trying to get to appear. So this will be his food or his offering. And then you can head out the doorway from where they were. And we're going to run to the left. So after you raise the platform with the chain all the way to the top, exit out of that gate that we opened to get the wolves. And then go ahead and make your way to the boat, which is down the left path. And then once you're in the boat, make your way to the right a little bit and then dock back where we got this chest and where you have a celestial altar. You'll also see that mystic gateway as another reference in case you want to make sure you're on the right island. There's the celestial altar where you change it from night and day, but we're not going to do that. We're going to come over to the grapple wall. And you can see there's another grapple, but we don't have it unlocked. So we're going to go around the side here. Keep going around the back, and there's going to be a lot of grapple points for us to get to the next area. Now, after that, you'll fight a boss, and then you'll have a chain that you can slide down. So kill the boss, slide down the chain, and then unlock the shortcut there. And then we can go to the Celestial Altar and change it to nighttime. So after you've done all that, switch it back to night. Then we can go back into our boat. We're going to dock again directly across from where we were. And what we'll do, instead of going left to where we trapped the wolf with the cage, we're going to go right. And this is going to take us right back down to that poison area where we dropped the chain down into. So that chain that I accidentally went down for a second there before, well, this is the reason why we wanted to knock it down and unlock it. Because now we can just climb right back up. It saves us a bit of time. And then we can go around, and then we can find that wall that we shimmy on again. And then we can fight the boss. There you go. Shimmy on in. Fight the boss. 
and you're going to get path of destruction completed after that you want to start heading back to the boat so you can go to the chain that we climbed up and then that wall that we climbed down and then make your way back to this boat now once you're in that boat again from where we were before you're then going to start making your way around the left to the north You'll see that mystic gateway there on the left side as a reference and you'll go through this cave that's right before a grapple and then just keep going north through the cave and then you'll find this little spot that you have to kind of crouch down into the boat so crouch down make your way through again the cave is linear so just keep going all the way straight Now eventually you're going to make your way out of the jungle and we are going to be into Vanaheim, the plains. So once you make it to the plains, you're going to find that we're going to go around the left side and then west. And we're going to go to the very back of the west area. So we're out of the jungle now. We've got all the stuff from the jungle that we needed. And then we can make our way over to the back and then dock our boat here. You can find a crystal over there to the right, which is some free materials. Go ahead and pick those up and then jump down the wall. We're going to grab a raven here. So you'll jump down into here. You'll get a quest started and there'll be a little mini boss fight. Kill the mini boss. And then while we're in this arena, if you go to the east or northeast side of the map, you're going to find a raven. Go ahead and take out the raven. That's our 39th one. Now, after getting the raven, there's going to be a side quest here that we can finish, and that's also going to give us our 30th artifact. So go ahead and grab that one. Finish the quest, and then we can grab a relic. So this is our 6th of 14. And in order to do this one, you can see back to where we jumped off. You can't go that way, but we're going to grab the crystal here on the right side of where we climb down. So again, that's just to the right of where we climb down, and then we can go ahead and leave the area. Now up here, you're going to find the gate that you can go through. Make your way through the gate. And then keep heading down the path and then go right. Then go right again. And this is actually back at that area where the soul eater was. Yeah, so as you can see, it might look familiar because we were here earlier. So we've wrapped back around here because what we need to do is go all the way to the east side and grab the boat. And then once you're in the boat, swim directly across going east. And then dock on the little docking station here right across from where we got on the boat. And then from here, we'll go east or southeast rather, and then south and then southwest, because then you can come through this area since it's nighttime. You can jump over here with the grapple and you're going to fight a mini boss called Jorgen von Strangle. No, I'm just kidding. That's fucking fairly odd parents. All right. After you kill him, you can grapple back over because we were trying to go get a relic. So we sidetracked there for a moment just to kill that side boss. And now we still still need to go for the relic. So we'll just go to the very right side of the wall here. Just hug the wall on the right. Keep going east. You don't have to go down that way. Fuck that guy. And then make your way up here. Use the grapple to go across. Then you're going to climb up the ledge and go to the left. Now the next little mini boss is sort of Dark Souls in it and just admiring the view. Kind of like a typical character chilling there. Go ahead and take him out. Grab all of his items that he drops. And then right here is going to be a crystal. It's just around the rock. Grab that for some more shards. And that's going to be the relic as well that dropped from him. So again, make sure you loot the relic off the body. And then come over and grab this side quest artifact. And that'll be artifact 31. So you should have got the relic from killing that side boss, and then you should have got the artifact from interacting with the quest giver. Grab those crystal shards where I just showed you again, and then we can head towards our next chest. So this chest, if you make your way across just by jumping the gaps, then you can go down here. You can either kill these enemies or just ignore them. And if you do ignore them, just go down the zip line. And if you don't ignore them, kill them, but then also still go down the zip line. 
And now you're going to be in the sinkholes. So from the sinkholes, we're going to go straight west as we drop down. Then go west and then head left and you're going to see the chest. Now we obviously have to light the runes to open the chest. And also when you come down here, the earth will start to quake and you'll get a side quest for that as well. So this quest will start automatically once you're near the chest. And then if you go over to the left here, you can create a row with your arrows and then light that on fire. So then we can light the rune. Then you can head over to the sea, which is just right here across from the chest as well to the north side. You should be able to reach that with your blades. And then the final one, you just want to grapple up over here. Go around. And then you'll see it over there when you're facing kind of south. And then shoot your arrows to make a path, bringing it closer to your blades. And then that way you have enough length and you can reach. I'm not sure what I was doing. Sometimes I think my brain's on autopilot. And even then the pilot's like drunk or something, you know? So then jump down after lighting that and then you can open the chest. All right, so open the chest. And then after you open this, we can go to our next area. Our next area is gonna have a stag in there for us. So now that we've got that, we're gonna head east again, back towards the end of the zip line. And then to the right of where the zip line was, you'll find this tunnel with some poison. Go ahead and freeze the poison and then jump the gap. And then you can kill the enemies here, but they're honestly kind of annoying. So from the boat, if you just go to the right, you're gonna find a grappling hook and you can just ignore them. So grapple across, you'll see the mystic gateway, but more importantly, you'll see a stag. This is our third stag. We need four of them for the trophy, of course. So go ahead and grab him. And then after you get him, by the Mystic Gateway is going to be a grapple. Grapple up the wall and then make your way through this tunnel. You're going to then use a spear to break the rock. And then as you go through here on the other side, you're going to find just a path. It's pretty linear. We'll go straight ahead. You are going to get attacked by a dragon. You just have to break the pillars and then he'll fly off. Then you're going to head right. Open up this door with the chain. So this will allow your boat to pass through. Once it's fully open, you can just let go and jump across. We're going to bust out the blades here so we can burn the bramble. And then we're going to bust out the axe and freeze the poison. After that's frozen, kind of squeeze through the ledge here. And then to the right is going to be an NPC we can interact with. So go ahead and interact with them. And after you interact with them, it's going to start a new quest. So casualties of war, the hourglass. You can then climb up here and on the wall or the ceiling rather is going to be some bramble. So burn the bramble on the ceiling. Then you can grapple across. And then from here, you can make your way down. And then there's going to be a crystal. You can smash that for some supplies. And then you can drop down into the hole. And then there's going to be a crawl space on your right. Go through the crawl space. After the crawl space will be another mini boss. And then after you kill him, you can go to the wall on the east side. So it's southeast. And then climb up the east wall. And then you'll make your way back to the boat. Now once you're in the boat, from the mystic gateway you saw there, you can just go right. We're going to go down the river here. So we're going south at the moment, just following this linear river. And then as you're going through here, you're going to find another do for a permanent upgrade. Guys, it is 1.40 a.m. and we are smashing this out. I've done like two hours of commentary in one sitting. I'm fucked. So if you want to, if you want to leave me a like, look, I won't stop you, okay? And since you opened that gate earlier with the chain, it's going to allow us to sail our boat through here. And more importantly, we can dock. So go ahead and dock. We're at the southern dock right here on this area. There's going to be a crystal to our left. And then we're coming up on our fifth berserker. So when you come up here, there's going to be some health and stuff like that if you need to restore for the fight. And then you can see the gravestone there. Go ahead and fight him. Please make sure you do the berserker. Um, I'm obviously not showing you the fight because it's pretty much the same thing. You just kill him. And then after you kill that berserker, you can come back to the left side over here. 
and then there's going to be our second flower. So we're grabbing this one since we're in the area. So we killed the berserker and then after that we went over here to grab some flowers. So we have two of nine. Then after that we're going for our next raven. So we can head back to the dock so we can get onto our boat. But in order to do that, we need to go a little bit past where we docked and then go down this path. And then that way we can use the chain to open the gate. Because once this gate is open, then we can finally sail the boat down there. Now there are some crystals on the other side as well that you can quickly grab and then you can just head over to the boat. I got a random 2 a.m. question for you guys. Do you think we ever stop clapping or does the duration in which we pause the claps increase? I really shouldn't be allowed to be awake at this time. Don't let that distract you from going back to the boat. So we are back at the dock. We're going to go in the boat and we are going to head north through the newly opened paths, northeast really. And then we'll keep going all the way down. And it's just going to be a pretty straight path. Again, it's all really linear. It's open world, but linear. It's nice how that works. All right. So as you come up on the left side here, you're going to find a beach that you can dock at. And sometimes a dragon can still attack you from here. So just be a bit careful, but you want to dock right here. And then we're going to go to our left. There's going to be a chain that we need to interact with. And when I went to interact with it, he was like, he was roasting my ass, bro. So pull the chain down to open up the path. And before you run off at this part as well, there's going to be that Raven. So that's the main thing we wanted to grab. So to the left of the chain, if you look over, you're going to find the Raven. Use the spear to chuck it across. Get a nice easy kill. So it's 40 out of 48. And then we can make our way down here for our next artifact. You can also grab the crystal shards there. But then after you've done that, head north and go through this gate. And then once you're through the gate, you're going to be in this tunnel with the dragon breathing fire down the tunnel. And there's a rock you blow up. After you blow up the rock, if you go around the side here, there's going to be a crystal. It kind of broke because you get attacked by enemies. So I just wanted to show you guys. And then you can head through the tunnel a bit more. And then eventually you climb up here and there's going to be the dragon again. He's going to just fucking destroy me. So you just want to switch to the spear, throw it at the wall. And then that way we can block the cave and we're not getting, you know, fire roasted on again. And then after that, interact with the quest giver for our 30 second artifact. And then you can climb the wall and make your way outside. Now, once you're outside after climbing the wall, you're going to find another chest. You want to knock down that chain because it goes to the dock, but then you also want to grab the runes here. So there's the one that we just hit, then there's the one on top of that pillar, and then there's one right here. Also, you want to make sure it lands on it. If it doesn't land on it, it's not going to count. Like even if you blow it up right next to it, it, it doesn't matter. Like it has to be connected to it. So you can see there, I threw two of them, but that's it. Then we blew them up. You climb the rest of the pillar there, and then you're going to fight a boss. So where that last rune stone was that we got for the chest, that's actually where you want to climb. You'll fight a boss and then you'll make your way back down the chain and then onto this boat. So hopefully that was easy to follow. You go up, fight the boss, come back down, go in the boat and then head Southwest, head Southwest through this tunnel. That's lit up on the side. You'll see some torches. And then you'll remember this place. We're back to where those enemies were and where the mystic gateway was. So go ahead and use your boat to dock on the beach here. Then you can go around the side, use the grapple, and then head back through everything to lead you to this area where the berserker was. We're then going to backtrack, running over here, and then jumping the gap. We're going to then pull our axe out, freeze the poison, and then kind of hug through the wall here. All right, go through the crawl space. This is where we had that little mini boss fight, but instead now, if we go over to the left here, which is Northwest, you can then burn the bramble and we can continue where we were. So we'll go ahead and squeeze through the rubble there, make our way through this tunnel. You're going to find another crystal, destroy that for some more materials for crafting. And then we can go up the staircase to the West. 
And then once you make it up here, you're going to find your 33rd artifact. So there's going to be another poem. And then after you grab the poem from here, you're just going to head down and then grapple over to the top right here. Then grapple up again. Keep making way all the way up. And then eventually you'll find the plant. So you can see these plants right here. That's when you know you're in the right area and then you can smash through the ceiling. And it's just on that left side. So once you've done that, smash the ceiling. You can burn the flower if you want, but you don't really need to. Because now we're going to open the gate and we're going to be in the wishing well. So we were in the sinkholes, but we finished everything there. And now we're in the wishing well. And what we need to do here is we need to go to the center. And then find this spot here. And you can press circle to throw a bunch of stuff in there. And it's going to give us a shit ton of materials. Like this shit just kind of like, it hooked it up for us. I'm not going to lie. You're also going to get some armor and stuff like that, but I wouldn't worry about it because we're going to get better stuff here in a second anyways. But head over to the north side of the well, and you're going to find a grapple. And then make your way over to this gated area, and you're going to find our final stag. This one's going to pop the trophy as well, so go ahead and interact with them. And, you know, give them a thanks for popping that trophy. All right, after you get your trophy and the stag and all that good stuff, you can come over to the northeast side, grapple up top, and then jump over this barricade. And now we're going to get our second lost page. So here's our second lost page. And then we can make our way down the chain. And we're right back at that mystic gateway right before the plains. So it's all connected, and we brought ourselves right back where we needed to be. And what we want to do is grapple up the wall. Then we're going to go around the right side here. And we're just going to keep running all the way east. If you get attacked or anything like that, you can just ignore it. Keep running east. You're going to find that grapple ahead. Make your way across. And then we're going to go up the ledge here and then to the left. So again, we're going all the way around and then to the left. That's where we fought the mini boss. Then you can jump down, go over the gap, and then we want to go north. So from here, go north so you can make your way to the shop. And then at the shop, you can go ahead and do quite a few things. So we'll go over that together. I got your back, okay? Make your way to the shop here, though. Interact with the NPC. You want to create the dragon scale armor. And once you do that, you're going to get a trophy. So you should definitely have the materials because we were just given a lot. So again, create every piece for the dragon scale. This is your final reminder to buy any of the shields if you didn't, because then that should have your trophy now. And if you don't have five stone wood, you can go ahead and buy them in the resource tab. So go ahead and buy those if you don't have them. You should have them though. And then I'm going to give you a list here of everything you should upgrade. Everything you should upgrade is right there on a list. And then anything left over, you can use your XP on Kratos and Freya and a lot of your skills and your rage and your relics and your runics and all that shit. So basically upgrade all of that. I've got a list there on screen for you just so you can pause the video, make it nice and easy, and you'll also get another trophy for upgrading your armor. So again, you made the dragon scale armor, but I recommend upgrading the fate breaker armor, and that's what I've got in the list as well. After you use all your skill points and do everything you need to in the shop, you can then get the raven directly behind you. So exit the shop, turn around, and you'll find this raven. So that's 41 out of 48. Then head up top here. You're going to find some enemies. You just want to take them out. You have to freeze those or otherwise it heals them. They're not too bad, but they are a little bit annoying. But kill the enemies. Come over here to the right side. Now there is a chest coming up, so you just want to burn the bramble here while you're up here. Otherwise you can't reach it from below. And then you want to grab the rift for the lindworm. So this is our fifth lindworm. We only have one more after this one. And then again, make sure you loot the rift for the supplies. After we've done that, we're going to head up top. Go right back to the right over here. So the right of the celestial altar. You can knock down this grappling shortcut. And then go over to the right for our chest. So this is for chest number 25. All you have to do is bust out your axe. And you can see the bell in the distance. That's the one we burned the bramble off of. And then call it back. 
hit this one as well, call it back, and then there's the one hidden in the back here. After you've done that, that's going to be your 25th chest, and then there's a side quest here that we're going to start. This is going to be for another trophy. So you may have saw this like deer looking thing or antelope. I don't know, bro. I don't watch the Lion King enough. But come over here, hit him with an arrow, and we save him by lighting him on fire? I'm going to be honest. I don't get it. But that's going to scare the spirit away. The spirit will go into the pillar. And that's what we need to happen so then we can kill the spirit. So from here, we're going to look for another animal. You're going to go west and then southwest. And you can see the animal in the distance against the rocks. And they're highlighted purple because they have the spirit on them. So from the one near the chest, we went southwest to find this one. And then it's going to go into this pillar here. After it goes into the pillar from this animal, we can then go east or southeast. And then you're going to find him just chilling here. He's a goat simulator, you know what I'm saying? So go ahead and free him. That's going to be all of them freed. And if you turn around quickly, because the boss is going to spawn any moment, it's going to be one of those phantom bosses where you have to break the pillars. But if you're quick about it, you can make your way over here and then get rid of the bramble on this pillar. So that's one less thing you have to do. Because whenever you weaken this boss, you obviously have to go, you know, destroy the pillar. And if you're fast, sometimes you can destroy two pillars during these boss fights. So definitely try and be quick about it because you can kill him even faster. And then after you defeat him, you're not only going to get some nice materials to upgrade your spear and things like that, but you're also going to get a trophy. So after you get the trophy, make your way back over to the grapple. And then from the grapple, head a bit east and then downwards. And then down the steps here will be the mystic gateway. We're going to use the gateway to go to Nidaveller, which is in Svartalfheim. Look, guys, I can't say that shit, bro. Okay. But just make your way all the way down the path. Head inside Durlin's house. And then after Durlin and Lunda and all those guys are finished talking, you're going to get a side quest. So just wait around for them to finish talking. And then you'll grab a Viking funeral quest. And then we're going to go get our flower. So exit from the other door. So inside Derlin's place, there's two doors. And you want to exit the one that you didn't enter from. Because then you'll end up over in this area here. Now you will get attacked by some enemies. Just take them out really quick. And then you're going to find a vent that we can chuck a spear into. Then you can use the spear to get across. And we can grab our third flower. So it's three of nine. Just get Freya to interact. Make sure you get progress and recognition for it. And then you can make your way back to the Mystic Gateway. So you just cut through the house again like before. Just use that Mystic Gateway to get to the Orvangur wetlands. And this is where we first started, bro. This is where we got our first raven. So that's, what a trip, man. But head over to the left. Come over here on this little lift or ferry. Use it to go across. There's going to be a cut scene, which I'm cutting out for spoilers. And then, you know, that's going to be another trophy for you. But before going back to the lift, after you finish that cut scene and, you know, you get through all that, instead of going the way of the lift, you want to go the opposite way because you're going to find this path. Make your way down the path all the way down, and you're going to find a lift down into the mines. I think it's called the apple core technically, but take the lift to go down. We're going to make our way to the next chest. So you'll see a mystic gateway in there as well. And there'll be a lot of enemies right here at the start. So just take them out and then keep running from the mystic gateway. And then we're going to go all the way down until you find the revenant enemies. And then take out the revenants because then we want to use the vent over here on the right side to climb up and then go left. And then this is where our chest is going to be. So there's going to be three runes that we need to grab with the spear. So from the chest here, if you go left, there's going to be two right here. Just make sure your spear connects with them. So we've got two there. And then we're going to come over to these ledges. We're going to climb up. Then we're going to turn around and we're going to see it to our left here. Once you have all three of them marked with the spear, go ahead and blow them up. And then loot your chest. Now, we've got a few artifacts we can grab down here as well while we're here. 
So again, grab the chest and then we'll start making our way towards the next artifact. So from the chest, if you jump down back to where we fought the Reavers and then instead you go over to the right, we'll make our way all the way down until we find a vent that we can chuck the spear into. Chuck the spear in, use that to climb up and then we can just run down and then we can blow up the wall here on the left side and then go down the path to the left. So go down this path and then you'll find the poem on the right side next to the dead body. It's actually a Bloodborne reference too, which makes my PP big hard. All right, after that, cross the gap with the grappling hook. So again, make sure you did grab that artifact, but there's another artifact that we can grab here. So we're gonna grapple across, climb up the ledge here and keep going down. You are gonna drop down into like a little boss fight room. This is actually where we rescued Tyr from the story. But after you kill the boss, look for the crawl space. And then as you go through the crawl space, you wanna make your way until you hit the door. And then with this door here, it's gonna take us back to that area that had the shimmy from earlier in the video guide. And then we're gonna go over the shimmy this time. So we're gonna shimmy across because we're gonna go for our 35th artifact. There's a gate right after you shimmy. So open up the gate and then from the gate itself, just go left. So you'll see Freya kind of hovering over there. We wanna to go to the left and then drop down. You're gonna use the shock arrow and then grab the artifact just chilling on the barrel. So again, you kind of go a bit to the left and then drop down. We're then gonna climb back up because we're gonna go get another artifact. So we're gonna grapple over, fly across onto this ledge, keep running down until you can drop off the side and then drop off the side here. And instead of going left at the fork in the road, we're gonna go right. So go right, go under the crawl space and then grapple over to the left side and then up on this ledge and then you're gonna find a door we can go through. Now, once you get in here, you wanna whip out your spear and then chuck it into the vent over there in the corner and then climb up the ledge and then grab our 36th artifact. We're getting really close to the end, guys. We're fucking smashing it. After that, jump on over onto the railing or the spear and then climb up. You're gonna see that we have a chest here now you can kind of see it, but it's under the water over there. As long as you think you can hit it with a spear, chuck the spear at it. There's one on the table over here, so chuck a spear. Then there's some ore here that you just want to blow up, and then you can chuck the spear on the last one that's behind it. Once you've done that, go ahead and ignite them, and then the chest should be open. And you only need three more chests, and we're done with that. Now back where we blew up the ore is actually gonna be our final lindworm. And that's gonna be another trophy as well. So we wanna make sure we don't forget that. We're gonna head over, do the lindworm, and then also make sure you loot it for the materials as always. But we're finally getting close to the end guys. I hope I condensed it enough without it being too difficult to follow. And I really appreciate you guys if you've made it this far. All right, after that, we can make it towards our sixth Berserker. You're gonna see this mystic gateway over here to the right, but you're gonna see a gate as well. We're gonna open up the gate. You do get attacked by enemies here, if I'm not mistaken. So after you kill them from that gate, just head left and then go down this little crack. And this is gonna be another crawl space. And once you make it to the other side, you're gonna find a wall you can grapple to. Grapple up there and then you'll finally be outside and you'll be back into the pit mines. It's a little bit of running, but you'll be back into the pit mines. It's not too bad to be honest. And then go around the right side here and you're gonna find the Berserker Gravestone. That's gonna be our sixth one and I'm pretty sure it's a double battle, but obviously it would still just count as one. So just make sure you do it. And then we need to get back to that mystic gateway that was in the other room. So just run back into the mines and then you'll get back here where the chest was that we opened. This is back at the mystic gateway near the chest and the lindworm. Use it to come back to the dwarven city of Nidalveller. And then you can go back to Durlin's house and then we're gonna turn in the quest. This is gonna get you a trophy as well. 
So just go through the dialogue, and once it's finished, you get the Rebel Leader Trophy. After that, we can then exit Derlin's house. And we can use the Mystic Gateway back at the dock to then go to Sindri's house. Now we're going to want to summon Ratatouille by hitting the chime. And then we're going to turn in our Lindworms. So grab the pouch off of here as well. And then turn in your Lindworms. And once you turn them in, that's going to pop the trophy. There you go, guys. The Lost Lindworms completed. So we caught them all. Now we're going to use the Mystic Gateway to go to Jotunheim, and we're going to Angraboda's treehouse. So teleport on in. And when you do zone in, you're going to start heading on the path that's sort of north. And then keep going north. And it just kind of leads you to a dead end, but it has a flower. So it's going to be our fourth one. So it's already four out of nine. And then you can go ahead and go back to the Mystic Gateway and travel to the canyons instead. So again, make sure you grab the flowers and then use the Mystic Gateway to go to the canyons. Now, when you make it to the canyons, you're going to use your axe to break the infection or whatever the fuck it is called again here. Break that shit and then you're able to climb the wall. And then after a short little cutscene of somebody, I won't spoil as well. Then you'll find the raven nearby. So after that little cutscene, just look over to the right, kind of the southeast side. You're going to see the raven. Jesus Christ, I'm a bad shot. Just kidding. 86 time is the charm. So make sure you get your 40 second raven. We only have six left. All right, guys, after you grab your raven, we're going to find these dogs with a sled that we can use. We're going to progress through the barrens, going all the way around. Just following the path, it's all linear, so it's going to open up into the barrens. And in the barrens, we have a, a side quest we're going to be doing as well as some collectibles. So there's a few things we need to grab. And we're going to head east. So upon making your way into the barrens, we're just going all the way east, up until you get to this little hut kind of thing. And this is actually a cave that we can go down into. So go ahead and climb down. And just keep progressing through. Again, it's all very linear, so just keep progressing through here, taking out the enemies as we go. Eventually, you're going to run into these enemies that are near one of the bells for one of the chests. And we're going to open the chest, but we have to do a bit of work for it. So we're going to climb up the ledge to the right of those enemies. We're then going to climb up this ledge as well. And then we're going to start working towards getting this unlocked. You're going to find a zip line. We're going to take that all the way down. Now once we land, if you make your way over to the right here, you're going to see a grapple point. We've got a grapple over here, and you can see we can't grapple there yet, so we're going to grapple here, and then grapple to the next spot. Once you're here, you just want to drop down. You're going to get ambushed. Go ahead and take them out. They're all just the little guys. Nothing too crazy. And after you kill them, all you want to do is face towards the north, basically where we were grappling. You're going to find a reflect spot that we can throw and kill the growth. Now you actually don't have to jump up just yet because we still need to loosen something down here. So continue forward past the chest and then open this gate. You might get attacked again just by another small fry or two. Just take them out and then open up this gate. That Now you can see we have that bell free. So that's one and two bells free right there. But we need the third one. So we're going to go back up to where we climbed. We're going to go on the grapple point and now we can grapple over where the growth was. Grapple on over there. Head east, and then make your way to the next grapple point, and then climb up this pillar. Once you get high enough, you can then wrap around, and then jump to the ledge, with the final grapple point. So grapple on over. You're going to find our final bell right there in the window, but we need to open the gate as well, so to the right is going to be the gate. Alright, now that we have everything open, you can hit this one first. And then you just want to call your axe back, quickly drop down, hit the next one, call your axe back, and then hit the last one. Or fail miserably like me. And then hit it anyways, because you got plenty of time. Do that and you should be fine. If you mess up, you can just climb right back up and then do it again. 
and that should get you a horn as long as you've been following along the guide. If not, it might just be something different, which again isn't a big deal. After you've done that, we can make our way back up to the top and we'll go through that gate that we actually opened and there's going to be a chain you can climb down. You're gonna climb down and get ambushed by some enemies. Just take them all out. Once they're killed, you're gonna find this crawl space. Make your way through the crawl space. And when you get to the other side, you'll have a little bit of a puzzle. It's just some ore in the way and things like that. All you have to do to clear this one is drop down to the right. Then you're gonna see the explosive, hit it with your spear, whatever you want. There's a side chest there, but you don't have to get it. And then we can go and progress through the main path. Now going down the main path, there's gonna be a bit of a growth puzzle here. So once you get to this spot here, you might get attacked, quickly kill them. And then once you're ready, we're gonna do the puzzle. You wanna throw it through the first growth, bounce it off the wall, and then it should hit the remaining two. After that, we're gonna jump the gap, turn to our left, and you're gonna see an explosive near some ore. Go ahead and throw a weapon at it. Then we can run to where the ore actually was. We're gonna call our ax back, get it ready to bounce it off the wall. It's gonna bounce off the wall again and destroy the remaining growth. That'll also reveal a grappling point, so go ahead and just grapple up that. We're gonna make our way around and we have kind of like a final part of this puzzle. Just get ready to, Jesus, I'm terrible at throwing the ax. Just hit that one to the left once, then that's gonna reveal the reflect and then you can go ahead and reflect it off of the side. And that'll break your last bit of growth. After that, we can make our way forward. Again, you'll get jumped, but it's all just nightmares or small fry, so don't really worry. We'll keep going through this small path Now we're doing all of this for a side quest because it's a trophy, so it's pretty easy. It's just a matter of getting through the actual maze or the puzzles, if you want to call them that. All right, once we get through these enemies here, you're going to find a wall we can climb. Just go ahead and climb up. Once you make it to the top, you're eventually going to find the creature that we need to free. So at the top, you can see there's an ore that we need to break. We then want to bounce this one off the wall and hit the remaining two. And then there should be one more point that we can free him from. So if you come back over this way, you're going to find it to the left. It's just on the wall. I had a bad camera view there, but there we go. From the left here, call your axe back and we have freed him. So we did free him, but not quite. Now we have to actually go to the surface again. So from the point of where we freed him, if you turn around and go this way where you'll find a chest on a ledge, this is the correct way to go. So look for this chest, climb up the ledge, and then climb up the wall. It's going to lead you back outside of the cave, basically. Once you're outside of the cave, just hop on your sled again. So we're back in the barrens. We're just going to want to head towards the quest objective, and this is going to be where we can actually free the creature. So again, it's north, northwest. You'll find the quest objective, and then all you do is destroy this, and it's going to free him. All right, after you freed him, there is one more we have to free. But before we do that, we're going to do a little bit of cleanup in this area. From that point, you're just going to want to turn around and go northwest. You're going to see a branch with a raven and there's like a building or a tower, whatever you'd like to call it. Get your 43rd raven, and then we can climb up into this area. There's some enemies in here. Just quickly take them out. There's nothing too crazy. Again, after you take them out, head to the left part, and you're going to find our lost page number three out of four. There is a legendary chest here as well. You can loot it. The item's kind of booty crumbs though, so you know, you don't have to loot it if you don't want to. But more importantly, on the opposite side of this chest is going to be our 37th artifact. So we're getting very close to the end of those as well. We're going to grab our 37th here. And next we're going to grab a chest. So once you've grabbed the two items there, the lost page and the artifact, make your way back to the sled or you can just run there because it's just that tower in the distance with some growth on it. So run over here. We're gonna light the first one here, which is the C. We're then gonna run around the side on the north. Keep running around. And eventually you're gonna be able to get a good spot of the growth and you just wanna chuck your ax through there. Just line it up as good as you can. And you should be able to clear it. After that, run south a bit. You're gonna then find the end rune and we can go ahead and light that one. And the growth was actually hiding our final rune. So what you can do is you can pull out a spear or use your axe. 
And there's going to be an explosive on the top of the building here, looking at it from the north. Well, technically from the south, but facing north. And then you can go ahead and blow that up to light it and then grab our 29th chest. Now, not too far from here, we're going to get another raven. We're going to jump back down. We're going to start heading southeast. You can see the creature floating in the background that we freed. So southeast, as a reference point, you'll see the giant pile of bones, and that's where the raven is. It's actually in the eye socket. So get a good angle from it, hit the raven, and that is raven number 44. Now from here, we're going to get our next artifact. We're going to make our way up towards this way. Ignore why I'm going to the left. Sometimes my brain doesn't exactly function like a normal person's. But all you do is climb up inside the mouth, use the grapple point, climb the ledge, and then you're going to attack some enemies here. It's quite a few of them, but it shouldn't take you too long to take them out. And then you can continue climbing up. And there's going to be a legendary chest, but there is also our 38th artifact, which is our boy Astro. Now that's all we need from here. So you can, again, just exit out the same way we came in. We're going to go get our seventh berserker. So hop back on the sled. Leaving that bone, we're going to go south. So going around the side of it and then going south. And then we should be going a little bit southeast. You'll see this sort of circle of swords. Some kind of like Kingdom Hearts looking shit going on here. But all you do is roll up in here. There's going to be the gravestone. Take him out and that'll be our next one. And again, you should have those checkpoints turned on if you're struggling. And a Berserker Stone if you really need it. Or Resurrection Stone, whatever you want to call it. After that, exactly from this point, we're going to start heading west. So hop back on the sled. We're going west. We're going to go all the way west. Wrap through this area here. And then you're going to eventually see this spot. There's a crack in the wall we can climb through for another artifact. Just in case you got lost, I'll show you on the map here. You're going to see the canyons and the below. And it's just in between those two points of interest. So that's all it is. Head there. Find the crack. Make your way inside, and that'll grab our 39th artifact. There is a chest in there as well, but you don't really have to worry about that. Okay, after grabbing that, just exit out the way you came and hop right back on the sled. And from this area, we're going to start making our way west again. Northwest, really. You're going to see an entrance to the canyons on the left, but we're going to go straight past it. We're then going to start turning north. You can kind of see the infrastructure there, so that way you know where we're at. But we're going to head north towards this chisel door. And they usually stand out because they have the orange particles in the air. We're then going to interact with the chisel door, open it, and then that's going to uncover the forbidden sand. So this is a new area here, much like the Barrens. When you get here, it'll take a second, but basically your quest will update and it's going to tell you where the next creature is. So it's going to say the cave entrance. You can follow the objective. It'll disappear once you're kind of in range, so just watch where I go. I go north, and then I turn around west a bit, and then here is the entrance. Once you get here, you can climb down into the cave. Now this one's straightforward, so just follow the path until you get to the creature. Then you can use a shock arrow to reveal the reflector and then throw your axe off of it. That'll destroy the growth from this angle. Then you can hop over here. We're going to destroy another one. After that, you should have one more left. And now that we've opened up a path by destroying that one, we can head back to the other angle we were at. So just swing back over, face to the right, and you should be able to line it up perfectly for the last one destroyed. Now, just like the other one, we're not actually freeing it until we climb back out and destroy that last bit of the hive. So what we'll do is we'll make our way out this way, just to show you the right way out. You're gonna find this ledge here, and there's also gonna be an artifact here. So you see a legendary chest and an artifact. You will get attacked here, so wait until you kill all the enemies and then make sure you do loot the artifact so you don't have to backtrack in here. Alright, so that's our 40th artifact. Then you can climb out on the wall here where the enemies jumped in from and then we can get towards the quest objective to finally break the hive. After you break the hive, there'll be just a small scene here and then you'll get your trophy. And then directly from here, we can get another raven. So once that's all said and done, 
Make your way over to the northwest side where the statue is. Keep going until you get inside where the statue is, and then you're going to find the 45th Raven just floating around the area. Then make your way inside here, and there's a little bit of a puzzle, but nothing too insane, so I'm going to show you how to do it. You're going to climb up here on the right side, break the growth. That's going to trigger the quest as well once you kind of zone into this area. Then what we'll do from here, we're going to run to the bridge that's right here on the right side, take the crystal from this one. We need to take the crystal so we can open up the path. So just take it around for a second. Go ahead and set it down. Then we're going to throw our axe off of the reflector. Break open that path. Then you can pick up the crystal and put it right back where it was to create the bridge again. The main reason we did that was to open the path. From there, we're going to get another crystal. So you want to come over here and under this path, you're going to find a shock arrow that you can shoot. And then it'll open up and you can destroy the growth. Then go to the back entrance here and then be able to grab the crystal. So grab the light crystal from the back. Make your way all the way around. And we're going to go up the bridge with this one. So now that we did open that path, we can go up the bridge with it. And then we can place it in the slot next to the rune tablet. Pop it in there, and then we're going to go back down. It's going to light up the statue on one side, but we have to do both sides, of course. So all you want to do now is run back down, go under the bridge and grab the crystal, and then put it on the opposite side of the crystal we just placed. Once you've done that, then an item is going to appear in the center, and you can pick that up to complete the quest. Once you've done that, run back to your sled, and then from the sled, we're going to head southwest. So as you exited where the statue was, we'll head southwest and against the wall here, almost facing south, we're going to find a quest item. This is a key half and it's going to start the desert door quest. And after we have that key half, we can then go get another flower. So we have one of two key halves now. And we're going to get the other one a bit later. We want to come over here and then once you're here, you're going to see a wall you can grapple up. But instead of grappling up just yet, Run down the path and you're going to find our fifth flower. It would not go well for them. A dawn bloom. Interact with it, make sure you collect it. That should be five of nine and then go ahead and jump up on the wall because there's a raven hidden behind the statue over here. So to the right behind the statue, grab your 46th raven and then we can leave the area. So head right back to your sled. Next, we're going to go for another chest. And all you want to do is hop on your sled, go south, and then southwest around this rock. And you can already see one of the ones we have to light is just up here. And, then, and as always, you just use your rune arrows, or your sigil arrows, and then light it. Once that's lit, you can face east, and you're going to find the other one on a cliffside. I recommend making these kind of big. To, to hit it a little bit easier. So this last one, I just kind of hit it three times so it really reaches that top part. And then that should light it. Then we're gonna go to the left of where we parked the sled. You're gonna come through here, lift up this pillar or go under it. And then our last one is just gonna be to the right. And if you haven't been following the guide, this will be your last chest. I do show you two more chests throughout the, the game. So I mean, if you don't, you know, if you're missing one that I had or Maybe you did them in a different order. And there you go. There's a couple more for you. But if you were following along, that should be your full belly trophy. But then we'll hop on the sled. We're going to turn all the way around and we're going to go for our eighth berserker. So we're going to head towards the back here going southeast. And then once we go sort of to the wall here, you're going to find the gravestone. So again, it was southeast and then you can see the gravestone. And then just take him out for our eighth berserker. After you've killed them, make your way over to the sled. Now from here, I'm going to turn around. We're going to be hugging the wall still going north, northeast. And then right here, you're going to find the other item we needed. You can actually just run it over and it'll pick it up. And then we can just continue down the path. So we're going to keep going down against the wall, going north, northeast. So again, make sure you picked up that half key before coming for this artifact. 
This is actually our last book as well, so you'll get a trophy for collecting all the books. And there you go. That's all of the books. So not all the artifacts just yet, but that is all of the books, which is a nice trophy. Now from here, we're going to go get another raven. So turn around the way we came. You're going to be going west for a moment and then northwest. And then we're going to face north. And then to the east, when we're facing this way, you'll see our last raven just up on this cliff. So this is the cliff opposite of where we got our last book. And you'll find the raven just up between those two cliff parts. After that, we're going to go get our last raven. So what we do is we go all the way east. Keep going all the way down. You're going to see an elven fortress looking thing. You can see the elf dude on the front. Now, once you get here, you're going to find some rubble at the start. If you just break the rubble, it's going to reveal a crawl space. Make your way through there, and then that's going to be where our last raven is. You can also find one of the final chests in case you did miss one or, you know, you still need some. There you go. Damn, am I a stormtrooper, bro? What's going on? Either way, make sure you grab that final raven. And again, if you were someone who had missed chests or maybe didn't grab the ones I had, here is an extra chest you can do. But if you don't need it, we can just leave. So exit the crawl space, turn around, you're gonna find a grapple. And then to the right, when you grapple up is going to be our 40 second artifact. So we only have one more after this. All right, so again, you grappled up and then to the right of the door is going to be an artifact. Then you can make your way through the door and then through another door. And then we're gonna grab our third lost page. So head inside here, go all the way at the very back of the room and you're going to already see the orange light here and then just pick it up. That'll be our third lost page. We're also going to get our final jewel here, which again is used to upgrade the amulet and then that's for a trophy in itself. So come over to the side, grapple up, climb the ledge and then open up this legendary chest. This will be the seventh one, so once we do go back to a shop or a blacksmith, we can upgrade our amulet all the way. After that, go ahead and make your way back to the sled, just from the way you came. And then from this area, you want to hug the wall over here to the north. And then we're going to be facing northwest slash west. And again, we're just hugging that north wall all the way down until we find this grapple point. Once you find the grapple, just make your way over to it and then jump up. Now, once you go through here, there'll be some enemies you have to clear out. Just quickly kill them, and then you'll find a spot up ahead in the east where you can shimmy through. This is where we're going to grab our last artifact. So shimmy through here, and then that'll be our final one. So please make sure you grab that, and then head back through where we just shimmied. And there's going to be a door on the right, and that's where we're going to use the key halves that we got. So go ahead and use the key on the door, open it up, and there's going to be a mini boss fight. And then just make sure you loot him afterwards for some items. Other than that, though, that's pretty much be everything we needed there. So then you can hop on your sled, make your way southeast back through the canyons, and then it's going to be where the Mystic Gateway is. So we're actually done with Alfheim, guys. Getting really, really close to the end, so just bear with me here. What we're going to do is use the Mystic Gateway to go over to Niflheim and go to the Undiscovered Gateway. You just unlock it by holding X, and then you can confirm traveling there. So we're going to the Mist Fields in Niflheim. Once you get into the Mist Fields, right off the bat, if you look to your left, you're going to find a flower. This is going to be flower six of nine. So go ahead and interact with that so Freya picks it up. We're going to go get another berserker here, so just keep going down the path after grabbing that flower. You'll make your way over the ledge. It's all linear, like I said before. There's only really so many places you can go in this spot. As I like almost walk into nothing, but just keep going towards the very end. You're going to find the ninth berserker gravestone. I recommend actually killing the enemies because otherwise you get stuck in combat and you can't interact with the gravestone. So how I'm just running through here, just take out all the enemies. Don't be stupid like me. But once you do make it to the end, you'll find the ninth gravestone. Go ahead and interact with that after you've taken out all the enemies in the area and then make sure you kill them. After you kill them, we can head back over to the Mystic Gateway. 
And then we're going to go to the Raven Tree. So we're still in Niflheim, but we're going to the Raven Tree instead. Fast travel there and then interact with the shop. We're going to max out our amulet since we grabbed the final jewel. So just go over to your amulet upgrade and then repair the sockets for the remaining slots. That's going to pop a trophy for you. And then after that, you can upgrade things if you have anything. So go ahead and do that as well. And you can also equip some more enchantments now that we have a maxed out amulet. So you can do that really quick if you like. Because then what we'll do is we'll head over to this tree where the ravens are. There is going to be some dialogue, so it won't let you interact with the chest until you go through the dialogue. Once the dialogue's finished, though, just start opening each chest. There's going to be dialogue in between each one. And if you followed my guide, you should have all of the ravens for this. Now, once you open the last chest, it's going to trigger a boss fight. Now, we don't actually fight him here. Where we need to go is all the way down across from the shop. So just head back down where the shop was and then head into the arena across the shop. After you defeat them, they're going to give you the relic that we're missing. They're nothing too crazy either, so don't really worry about that. But go in there, defeat them, and get your hilt. And then you can head this way, which is to the left of where the raven tree was. And we're going to go down into the prison. Now, in the prison at the very bottom is going to be our seventh flower. So you climb down, you know, just climb down the wall. And then you have to use your spear to go down the prison. As you go down, each floor has some enemies on it. Just take them out and then use the chain to lower these platforms. So you, that way you can go even lower. So again, you're just lowering the spears to go down further. There is a spot where you enter a area on the side and then that helps you go down and up further as well without using the spear. And then once you make it to the very bottom, you're then gonna find a prison cell over here on the south side or southwest even. And inside here is the flower in this prison cell. There is a side quest in this prison, but you don't actually have to do it. Um, but yeah, it's a pretty decent one. So do it if you want, but you don't actually have to. There is one artifact we need to get, and it's actually on the top floor. You have to line these up in order to get to the top part where the chest is. And the chest is right here where I'm throwing my spear. So just line up the spear where I have it by using the chain, and then find this side path. If you go through here and then jump up with the grapple... Then that way you can skip that floor and you'll see this gate with the sliding bit. But then you can skip that floor and then use the spear to get up to where this legendary chest is. But the relic we want is actually on the body to the left of the chest. So again, line up the spears like that and then just use the side path and you can get up here really easily. And then we can just leave. And you can do that just by going over here to this gate and then sliding it open. And that should be 8 out of 14 relics. Next, we're going to a new area, so just climb back up, make your way to the Mystic Gateway. We're then going to Midgard and going to the Sanctuary Grove, where Charlie is, which is Freya's house. So you just want to look for the Undiscovered Gateway, where Sanctuary Grove is on the map, and then press X to unlock it. Fast travel here, and then once you're on the other side of her house, you can see from that angle there, you can find our eighth flower in the corner over here. Now, she won't let you interact with it until she stops talking to her house. So wait for that, interact with it, and then grab your eighth flower. And that's actually all we need to do in this realm or this area. Sorry, not, not this realm, just this area. We'll go right back to the Mystic Gateway, and then we'll go to the King's Grave fast travel that we unlocked earlier through our playthrough. Now, the King can be pretty challenging, so obviously have a Resurrection Stone. Um, use the checkpoints if you're really, really struggling. Um, or if you don't want to, then learn its parries and learn when to dodge. That's pretty much it. Once you kill them, you're going to get our ninth relic, but you're also going to get a trophy for doing all of the berserkers. After that, directly from where we kill him, you can then make your way over down this pathway. This is earlier, earlier in the story where we were. And there's actually a mystic gateway at the end that we can use. So we're going to go to our final area. It's going to be our final area, all the trophies, we're going to smash it out and we're going to get our platinum soon. So for this flower, all you want to do is go into Muspelheim and then we're going to the Crucible. And once you get to the Crucible in Muspelheim, you're going to jump down and then to the right of the shop is going to be our last flower. So as long as you followed that correctly, then you can get the trophy here. If not, you can use the timestamps below, of course. But that will complete that quest. And then we can go into the shop. 
And once you're in the shop, all you want to do is make sure you craft the remaining relics. So these are all of the relics that we should have left, as long as you follow it along correctly. And once you craft all of them, you'll get your collector trophy. So there's another trophy smashed out. Now we can actually start the crucible. So the way the crucible works is we come into the north sword here. And I'll have a map up in a moment, but you can see that F rune that's on the sword. Now each of these swords will have two trials at the start of the crucible trials, and there's going to be six in total at first until we unlock more. So the way this works is there's the north area, the east area, and the south area. So north sword, east sword, and south sword. And what you want to do is do trial one and two for all of them. Now the only one that might be tricky for you is to not get hit. And what I did for this one is just stand back, let Freya kind of keep them staggered, and then also use the spear and you can blow them up. Once you get to the little bull guy, you can just roll away at the last second so he doesn't ram you. And then just start blowing him up. So that's really the only one I think maybe you might need tips on. Overall, it's not bad. And then, of course, just look at your red arrow and you can see when you're being attacked. But again, you want to do the north sword, east sword, and south sword. And you want to do trial one and two for all three of those. So there's going to be six trials. Once you've done that, it's going to complete the quest and it's going to unlock more trials. So after you unlock those, the rest of the way the trials work is basically every two trials you do, it's going to randomly generate a third trial where the West Sword is, which is the main arena on the map. So after doing those six, you'll notice if you come back to the main arena, back where the shop was, and you interact with the sword, it's going to give you a new quest because we've already done the six trials. We did one and two trial of each sword, so east, north, and south. After that, you'll get this new quest. You can grapple and then go over to the North Sword again. So see the rune on the top there? It's F. You just want to do different combinations to get all of the rewards. And once you do different combinations and get all of the rewards, you'll get the trophy. So just to make this easier, after you do those first six trials, all you then want to do is do the North Sword and the East Sword Trial 3. And then that'll unlock a Trial 1 in the West Sword, which is the main arena. So you only have to do those three trials. Because after you do those three, you're then going to finally have enough supplies to upgrade an armor set all the way to max if you haven't yet. Then that'll be another trophy. And then of course after you maximize one piece of armor for the trophy, you can upgrade other weapons and things like that just to make yourself a bit stronger. Because we do have a few more trials to do. The first one you want to do, or the first combination, is then South Sword 1. North Sword 3, and West Sword 1. After you do those three, then you want to do this, and then so forth. So there's going to be five different combinations. So all you're doing is what it says on screen, and I have them up on screen for about seven seconds each. So just pause them, do the trials in the order that I put them, and then that's pretty much it. Once you get to the last one here, which is our fifth rotation, it's going to be the last unlock that you need, and that's going to pop the trophy. Now hopefully this makes sense. I tried to simplify it. All you're really doing is doing a combination of those trials to then get a different reward until we have all of the different rewards unlocked. Now your final trial will just be this one here, which is just a ring going around a map and then you just have to stay inside the ring. And that's really it guys. All you have to do is go through, pause the video on each one, do the three different trials in that order until the trophy pops. Then you'll get the trials by fire you don't have to do all the combinations, only the ones that I put on screen. So even though there's more than what that is, you don't actually have to do that to get the trophy. Just do what I put on screen. Then after that, we can head through the crawl space here from the main arena going south. And you'll notice that you can jump down off the edge and then grapple on. You're then going to grapple your way across until you get to a campfire and then interact with the item here for our final boss fight. Now, she is the hardest one in the game, so if you want, make sure you have a resurrection stone, make sure you're well equipped, and then start the fight. Overall, all you want to do is parry when you can, and then dodge when you need to. That's pretty much it. It's kind of trial and error. You want to use all your runic attacks just like before, but that's really it, guys. Um, other than that, you've made it all the way through the video, and if you did, and you're one of my real ones who made it all the way to the end, not only do I appreciate you, but just so I know who the real ones are, why don't you leave a comment below that says the bear and the wolf. Other than that, guys, I want to thank you guys so much for watching. If this did help, please leave a like. It helps the algorithm. It recommends my content. You guys don't know how much it means to me, and I appreciate you guys.
Thank you guys so much for watching. I really do hope it helped you get the Platinum a little bit easier. Hopefully you had a great time with me. And if you'd like to see kind of what my journey was like going for the Platinum, you can click the video on screen now and check it out. And you bet your sweet ass we didn't forget about our Patreon supporters. Put those sexy son of bitches on screen now for me.